You're listening to The Lowdown Show. Mamma mia! Your NXT review and discussion show. We are NXT! Right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. How's it going, guys? Welcome to part two of episode 111 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, the NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam Review Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I am joined by my two regular co-hosts, Hollywood Michael Chow, NXB Brian, and our special co-hosts from That Ass Podcast. He is... James from That Ass Podcast. Guys, you guys want to listen to us on the go? iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app available for all Android and Apple devices. It lets you chat with us on the air. It also allows you uh, to listen to previous episodes of the podcast. We are also available to listen to on SoundCloud. So if you're into SoundCloud and that's easier for you to listen to us, we are available on SoundCloud starting with this episode today. Also, YouTube.com slash NFUWR if you want to listen to us and watch us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates and check out our sponsor of the podcast extreme wrestling shirts.com they specialize in pro wrestling apparel and use code no holds at checkout to save 10 percent. and also go check out our friends at wrestlerumble.com for their special pick em contest every single dirty be pay per view and every single takeover guys go follow them on twitter and check out their website wrestlerumble.com and we're here for the second part of the Lowdown Show, I had to restart Spreaker so we can get a little bit more time here. Uh, but we're going to be doing the uh, SummerSlam review. If you missed our NXT TakeOver review, it's in part one. Uh, that is live everywhere right now, so go check it out uh, right uh, on Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Um, <laughs> I really don't want to make this as long as uh, the pre-show was for SummerSlam. God, the pre-show is so goddamn long. My God, man. Do they? Is it really necessary for a uh, two-hour pre-show? No. Like it's ridiculous. Well, why? Why um, is pre-show two hours long? You're kind of wrong. There's a three-hour pre-show on Saturday to SummerSlam called <laughs> oh, NXT. Oh, stop! <laughs> He's joking, everybody, for all the you know, remembering the whole work thing. Um. <laughs> Um, my God, but I, I was sitting there and I watched it all. I watched the full seven and a half, whatever it was, uh, pay-per-view. I had people over and there were points like I was was getting halfway through the pre-show and I'm going, Oh my God, like, can they please just like cut it short and just start it already? And like the one gripe I want to give, and we'll give it here with, um, while we're talking about SummerSlam is. Poor Rusev and Andrade seeing all this, oh, man. What a shame. What a shame. They had a match in front of a quarter-filled arena. For guys like that, that's a shame. There were so many other matches that would have replaced at that point in the pre-show. It's, it's just not fair. You got guys like Andrade and Cien Almas, who was NXT champion a couple months ago, to what he is now. It's sad. That guy has done so much to revitalize his character. Adding Selena Vega was the best thing for him. Mm-hmm. And you're going to subject this guy to the pre-show? Not only the pre-show, the first match of the pre-show when there's not even enough people in the arena to fill the hard camera side. That's sad. That's one thing. I, I have a big gripe with the pre-show and it being too long. Keep it one hour. Have one match. Do your little pre-show panel, whatever bullshit, and then start the pay-per-view. Two hours long, man. It's just it's way too long. It got to like the twenty minute mark. I'm going, oh my god, let's go. <laughs> it's, 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 Tiffany just brought up a great point in the chat, and I know this personally from going to the Barclays Center myself for uh, WWE events. It takes forever to get through those metal detectors. Mm-hmm. It takes forever, which is why, to your point, this shouldn't be a two hour pre show. 
There shouldn't be a two. There's no re- have the damn video packages. Put that stupid panel up with you got you, you know you, you you got David Atunga and all the other useless morons that nobody wants to see on television, and, and, and just and just have the matches. When Andrade Cien Albans used to come out with the mask, there was symbolism behind him wearing the mask. Now it's just like a prop. Yeah, not a lot of people know sim- that. No, people don't know that. There was symbolism behind him wearing that mask. Right. Back to his roots. He would only wear it on special events. He didn't wear it all the time. Now it was just wear it. It's part of the decoration. It's. A, I mean, it, it, this is this is sadness. Sadness yep. that this is on the pre-show. My God. I and know. poor Rusev. <laughs> yeah. The guy, <sighs> the build up the Rusev Day thing. Becoming the most over thing, and I knew it. I knew it, and the, the rumors I think were true that were out there that they didn't like when Rusev got over in his own with the whole Rusev they thing. They've mm-hmm. basically let it die now. It's not as popular as it used to be. WrestleMania yeah. weekend, it was another thing. Everyone was lit out of the bag, oh, so yeah. obviously they're going to chant Rusev Day every other time. But they've literally made they've watered that shit down so much to the point where it's not as over it is anymore. And why? I don't understand why they didn't ride that wave. Like how they would have. They've made so – I bet you they've made so much money on the whole ruse. When all the products came out, when this was, like, at the peak of its hypeness, they probably sold so many Rusev Day calendars, any T-shirts. Like, there's – you look in a WWE crowd, there's every other shirt. It's like Rusev Day. So mm-hmm. I don't understand why they didn't ride that way. Why are they watering it down to the point where, like, they don't want it to be over? I don't Nobody, no, no one's allowed to be over. That's the problem. No one – Finn Balor, look what they've done. Rusev Day, they destroyed it. Look, look, look around the landscape. Every single right. time, someone peeks a little bit above the uh, above the ceiling. Oh, gotta slap them down, put them back in their place. Everybody's on the same plane, except for Roman Reigns. Everybody's on the same plane. Right. Everybody, even when Monday Night Rollins started taking off, Seth Rollins wrestling an over an hour on the Raw. Oh, 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 bring that down a little bit. And bring that down a little bit. <laughs> That's how they are. Yeah. They, no one is allowed to be John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, where you build your career to not need the WWE anymore. They don't want that. So this is where you get this bullshit continuously mm-hmm. with this roster. It's amazing. Because you see what they did with Daniel Bryan and The Miz. When they want to tell you a story, then they, then they whip out the amazing video packages and show you how great their production team is. And they show you, oh, look at this history from 2000, you know, 2010. When they want to tell you a story, they'll do it. When they want someone to get over like Joe, they'll do it. And then a little, a little rambunctious there. Mm. <laughs> you got to calm it down a little bit. Uh, next week, next week you're losing all truth. That's just the way it's gonna be. <laughs> but anyways, um, like I said in the first uh part, guys, if you haven't listened to it, go check it out. Uh, I took over the pun intended. I took over the takeover Brooklyn uh, part of the show. I'm letting my uh, co-host that runs the West Coast, Michael Chow, uh, take over the SummerSlam part of the review show. So without further ado, guys, please help me welcome. The host that runs the West Coast and the runner for SummerSlam, Michael Chow. Uh, do I have to? It's a tough job, guys, but someone's <laughs> got to do it. So here we go here. So if you guys missed our first podcast or our part one, go ahead and check it out. Uh, because this pay-per-view is so freaking long. My goodness, guys, 13 matches. I've actually set in a rule. There's only going to be two minutes for these guys to get out whatever they need to say about this match. So, guys, if you got your phones out, your clock's ready, go ahead and get ready to time this stuff. And uh, every great show has a great pre-show, like this two-hour pre-show, so we got to start somewhere. Let's go ahead and start into SummerSlam, the 31st chronological SummerSlam in the history of the WWE. Will it be as good as the last one? We'll find out. Let's get into the first match. (laughs) It is one of the greatest NXT champions, and now he's on the pre-show. Andrade seen Almas Will Long with former TNA knockout Zelina Vega taking on the ravishing Rustin Lana and the man who was in the WWE Championship match, Rusev. Of course, Lana and Rusev losing out to Andrade seen Almas. It is a rematch from last month. 
Let's go ahead and talk about this six-month preview of the Mixed Match Challenge. Let's start with you, James. What did you think about this match? Andrade Cienomas, Zelina Vega defeating Lana and Rusev. I mean, I thought that they would defeat them. And then, you know, on SmackDown, they'll do another match. And then, you know, 50-50 booking rears its ugly head. Um, You know, I'm pretty sure they just wanted to give them a win. You know, they're starting to feature, you know, Andrade Cien Almas a little bit more. They've been toying around with this Rusev feud with an English interrupting and costing matches in different combinations and trying to make amends for when he basically cost Rusev the match against AJ Styles. So this match really did nothing for me. I mean, it was okay. I mean, if this was really produced the way it should have been produced, A, it would have been on the main roster to start SummerSlam. That's what should have happened. And B, um, there would have been a little more intensity um, you wouldn't have them in fight in front of a quarter filled arena. So, and to be quite honest with you, I mean, the only reason I watched the show is to prepare for this. Otherwise I wouldn't even watched it, but you know, normal stuff, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that made me excited, you know, typical TV match. And it's a shame. I think it's a pitiful shame because so much more could have been done for this. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle, let's take it over to you. What would you think about this match? You know what? I'll be honest with you right now. Uh, half the match I wasn't watching because I was actually getting the barbecue all lit up because I had a SummerSlam uh, barbecue with a couple people at the house. So I was getting the burgers fried up, getting the dogs ready. Uh, I was in and out watching this match. Again, my only gripe was it was what I said in the intro of this podcast. Um, I hated they were in a match with like tw- – 5,000 people in the arena really didn't deserve to be that early in a pre-show um, for what it was they picked the right people to win this match thank God because I thought if Rusev was going over I'm like did he really need to get over here for one you were the first pre-show match two you called up Andre Cien Almas and I don't think they're using they're not obviously they're not using Cien Almas to his full potential here with how good we saw how good Cena Vega was on the mic back in NXT and how it made the character Cien Almas and how good he was in NXT to become an NXT champion. The fact that they're not pushing him at least at the top of the mid card or even the main card right now is actually a travesty mm-hmm. because Cien Almas is the complete package. We saw the matches he's had. He had one of the matches of the year with Johnny Gargano earlier this year. And you're telling me you can't fit him anywhere on the main card against anybody? Give me a fucking break from why now was he on. Called, why was he called up? Exactly. Why was he called up? Why did Vince want this guy up if you weren't going to use him? If you're you, literally, I think in his head is like, oh, he's literally the next Del Rio, but I'm not going to give him the pushes, Del Rio. I'm just going to stick him somewhere where it looks good. Like he has these people that are up and calls people up that really make no sense. Don't need to be called up. Push this guy in the main. You got. You can see the matches this guy could have with the Shinsuke Nakamura, with an AJ Styles, with a Daniel Bryan, with the Miz. The the list goes on on SmackDown. But the fact that they put him on the pre-show in the first match, completely sad. All right, let's take it over to Brian. Brian, what did you think of this six-month preview at the Mixed Match Challenge? All right, so I'll keep it quick since uh, Jabron James and. Kyle Masters don't know how to tell time with the two minute limit here. Um, <laughs> hey, I was time myself. I was like a minute fifty five. I was good. Um, great pre show match. It was exactly what everyone expected. I mean, both these guys obviously deserve to be pushed to the moon. Uh, Zelina Vega, holla at me. Lana is the best. <laughs> Lana number one. All right. Wow. Wonderful. Short Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Short and simple. All right. In my opinion, do I need to see a rematch that we saw on SmackDown? No, we did not. I thought this match was okay. You know, they should really have the pre-show panel, like, at the beginning of the show and then throw the matches in kind of towards the end. I don't know why they did this. They did something in this match which I, that had nothing to do with the wrestlers, but I absolutely hated it. They actually did it in every single match for the pre-show. It is they split screen the match. Oh. It's, ba- it's bad enough oh. that oh, Andre Cien Almas, Zelina Vega, Lana, and Rusev had to perform against a crowd that's not even there. It's bad enough they're in the pre-show. But they split screen this match 
to give a preview of a match that's on the main card. And I'm thinking to myself, then what's the point of the pre-show panel? I don't understand this. And they did it for every single match in the pre-show. Absolutely awful. That was dumb. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to our next match, guys. It is our first title match of the night. The Cruiserweight Championship makes its way into the pre-show again. We have Mr. Alicia Fox wrestling Cedric Alexander defending the Cruiserweight Championship against PowerPoint Drew Gulak's evil cousin, Sirius Drew Gulak. What do you think about this match? I should point out that the Brian Kendrick and gentleman Jack Gallagher is banned from ringside. Let's take it over to Brian first. Brian, what do you think about this match? Who the hell are these people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was Brian. I I I I want to go pick up some pizzas. I don't think he watches 205 Live. <laughs> I I watch 205 Live, Gabba Gulak, whatever. It I, I honestly didn't. I I gave zero dimes about this match. Well, if I could jump in now for my turn, um, I, I agree with Brian because they had other people more suitable than Gula. If you're, if you're having a SummerSlam pre-show and you want to hype it up, you want to get people invested into the pay-per-view, get them hyped up for the pay-per-view. For one, you're doing the wrong idea of making it two hours. Let's just put that out of the way. Two, you want to get eyes on 205 Live. That's what their main goal is for the pre-show. But to me, like you could be doing this on the main or on the main card. Why they do the pre-show? Clearly, it's Vince McMahon not giving into the cruiserweights. It is what it is. Anyways, to pick a guy like Drew Gulak out of the people that have been busting their ass the last couple of months on 205 Live more than Drew Gulak, to me, like. This should have been a pre-show match for a B-level pay-per-view. Not SummerSlam, which is one of the big four pay-per-views. You're getting eyes on it. You know everyone's watching. Hype it up. Look at the two the two people I want to point out that should have deserved a title match here against Cedric Alexander to get people hyped up for the card and get people vested on 205 Live. You have 1A, Mustafa Ali, who's literally done so much to build his character towards now and puts on instant classics in every single goddamn match he's in. People do not give this guy enough credit. He is literally the most one of the most underrated people on 205 Live. Look at his sick entrance. How can you not have him in his unreal Sub-Zero entrance not be on SummerSlam to get people hyped for the pay-per-view, to get people hyped for the cruiserweights? How can you not have that on there? I, I literally mind-boggle, but you have Gula coming out in some stupid presidential fucking boxing outfit that... I was I could fall asleep watching this goddamn match. Not to take anything away from Drew Gulak. I'm just saying, you picked the wrong guy here. To another guy, Buddy Murphy. You're talking about hard workers? What, I'm going to have to Buddy ask you to wrap Mur- it up, Kyle. Ten seconds yeah, I'm left. I'm just saying, one of those two, Buddy Murphy or Mustafa Ali, should have been instead of Drew Gulak. That's all I'm going to say about that match. But good for my boy, CA. All right, perfect. James, take it over to you. Cedric Alexander versus Drew Gulak. <sighs> Come on, guys. I mean, <laughs> I, I, as much as, you know, Drew Gulak was playing, you know, his character to a T with the PowerPoint presentations and the no fly zone stuff. And then he kind of th- went back to the throwback stuff. And, you know, they made him a little bit, of, you know, of a, you know, of a powerhouse again. And this 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 isn't what I want to watch. The money match is Leo Rush. Against Cedric oh, Alexander. Leo Rush, I forgot about him. That's right. That that's the that's the and that that that's the money match. But it's not a coincidence that this is going on here. Okay, how is it that every single time two hundred five live is mixed into the martini of the main roster, it comes up sour, it tastes disgusting. Why is it that all of a sudden the handcuffs seem to show up? The shackles seem to show up? I, I don't want to hey, Listen, I told you before, anything they get their fingerprints on is going to be destroyed. I didn't really care for this match. And to be quite frank, I tried to watch it twice. And I just found errands I had to do. So I really can't give you too much about this other than it happened. It was a match. And meh. Yeah, that's like that's it. Wrong person. Wrong person. Yep. Don't worry, guys. Pretty pretty soon we'll have the right people in the two hundred five pre-show. Gargana and Champa are gonna blow us away. 
<laughs> Every pre-show. Mm-hmm. There you go. And Ray Mysterio. I'm hey, locking you in the shark WWE cage soon, man. You're, you're going to be locked <laughs> in the shark cage soon. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> there you go. And uh, for me, believe it or not, but I have my reasons. I thought this match was actually pretty good, but but I was barely paying attention. So I don't know if that came into play, but mm. I, I do agree with everyone in the room. I do believe someone better suited for this. It's freaking SummerSlam, which is considered the WrestleMania of the summer. Someone else could have been in this match. I mean, you talk about Buddy Murphy, Mustafa Ali, uh, Hideo Itami, or Leo, Leo Rush. Rush. Anyone. Yeah. Or even if you need a jobber, because let's face it, Cedric Alexander was always going to win. Put in TJP. This guy, I mean, he's... He's former, the first ever Cruiserweight champion in the new era. Why not? But we're moving on to the last match. It's another title match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. We have the b Taraj defeating the Revival, which I will now nickname the d because of how far they've fallen mm-hmm. down. Let's go ahead and start with James first. James, what do you think about the B-Team, B-Team, go, go, go? By the way, which I am very looking forward to Never, their new reality ever. show. Ever say that? Their new, ever, hey, their ever new reality that show, again. Total Fellas, should be really good. But, no, uh, they replaced the F, remember? Oh, okay, it's Total called... Fellas. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I, I, that's <laughs> enough for me. James, what did you think about the B team defeating the Revival, who have never, ever recovered from the rut that they were in? How far have we fallen with the Revival? The Revival just 10 months ago. Gave us one of the greatest tag team matches we ever saw. Actually, it was about no, it was about fifteen months ago. <laughs> it was one of the greatest matches that we ever saw with with Champa and Gargano. I was there and, and take over Toronto, Canada. And now this, this, is what it's come down to. Please, Michael Chow, don't ever do that again and say <laughs> the B-team theme, <Yeah>. okay? <laughs> Please. My God. I wanted to vomit. <laughs> and this is another match. I couldn't, I couldn't even watch it. I, I was so disgusted. This is pathetic. I, I can't, I have no other words other than disgust. And unforgivable. That's all I have. I'm sorry. That's all I have to give. Sorry. That's all this warrants. <laughs> all right. Uh, B team stands for Brian. So let's take it over to Brian. Brian, what do you think about your favorite team, the B team, defeating the Revival by accident? Is this a new gimmick they got now? So, Brian, what do you think about this match? I thought the greatest tag team in the world, the B team, the Brian team, Stole the show at SummerSlam. We are all B team. Everybody in the chat, we are all Brandy, Tiffany. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Cupid Girl, hell, even Sal Rex. We are all B team. We're can all in this. How can you sleep at night saying this? Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> this is a tag team champion. We are all tag team. This is Freebird rules. We're all B team. <laughs> and if there was anyone that ever needed those call me back down Vince pants, it's the revival. Yeah, or call me back down, Hunter. JD. Yeah, call me back down, Hunter. Those guys, I mean, they were amazing in NXT. They off the bat, they just they were they were dead on their debut, their main roster debut. Nobody, it, the, these guys were amazing. The storytelling these guys used to do in the ring was amazing. Now they're jobbing on the pre-show, but. The B team remains your tag team champions. B team, B team. Go, go, go. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, Kyle, we take it over to you. What do you think about this match? I'm not even going to repeat their name since Brian just said it. Their entrance, new entrance music enough. So what do you think about this match? I'm going to keep it short and simple. Look at who the NXT, or look who the NXT tag team champions are. Look at who the Raw tag team champions are. Exactly. You look at the finish of the NXT TakeOver tag team match. Look at the finish of the Raw tag team title match. Don't ever tell me that the tag team division on the main roster is better than NXT. It is complete fucking garbage. 
for the end of that match to go the way it did, where Revival had the roll up, and the B team knocked each, they ran into the, the the pin to flip it. Like you did that to the Revival. James put it in good perspective. They had one of the greatest tag team matches ever to be shown on television. To this garbage, complete and utter dumpster fire. I have nothing else to say because it doesn't warrant any other comments. Nope. Fair enough. Go, 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 go. <laughs> but on that case, if wait, if they're the B team, does that make the Undisputed Era the A team? Right? Makes sense, right? Every team on NXT is <laughs> by far the A team compared to the B team. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead. We're moving on into the main card, guys. We're getting to another title match. It's a rematch from last month if we needed to see it. It's Seth Rollins with Dean Ambrose, so I guess it's different this time, taking on Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. Seth Rollins with this, I guess you could say, surprise win, winning back the Intercontinental Championship, hot potatoing. Let's go ahead and start with you, Kyle. What do you think about this long match, might I say, to start off the show? Okay, so I will... Give a, this another small credit thing that this match was uh, slightly better than the Iron Man match, which I shouldn't be saying that. If you're going to have an Iron Man match against Ziggler and Rollins, those two guys that could literally do so much more in the ring that they're ho- obviously holding back on, the Iron Man match should be overseeing everything. But the fact that it was the shittiest Iron Man match I've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> that I'll ever see, mm-hmm. this match was slightly better. That's sad, but it was <laughs> slightly better. Um the manager thing, it was exactly as I predicted in our predictions. They were going to get involved somehow and attack each other. They didn't get thrown out. Um, I, I really don't know how I feel about this match. I did read reports that uh, we are heading towards... Uh, apparently the current plans are still at WrestleMania to have a Shield triple threat. So let's just keep that in the back of our minds as we go forward here. Um Everyone was expecting a Dean Ambrose heel turn after this match, after Rollins won the championship belt. I was They were kind of teasing it a little bit. You can kind of tell mm. they were slightly teasing it a little bit, but I thought it was a good idea not for them to do it right away and to let it build. That's something you don't really see them. It, you, usually WWE is like quick fire on everything. Mm-hmm. I was kind of impressed that it didn't quick fire on that, but uh, it is what it is. Seth Rollins are a new Intercontinental Champion. I can't know. I, I they, they really haven't been building the division that well, the mid card division. So whatever, he's a, a better champion, I guess. All right, Brian, let's take it over to you. What did you think about two members of the Shield taking on one half member of the Spear Squad and one half member of Three MB? What did you think about this match? <laughs> God damn! Well, all we needed was Jinder Mahal, and it would have been a great time. But um, yeah, would have had a great um, time sleeping. The match itself, I mean, it it is what it is. They're going to put on great matches. Ziggler, Rollins, they can't do wrong in the ring. So we knew exactly what we were going to get out of these two. Um, in my only gripe, and I might be kind of nitpicking or, or putting too much into this, is a month ago we had a 30-minute Ironman match when nine pinfalls or nine falls. This match went almost, oh, I think, 26, 27 minutes, about the same amount of time with one fall. Logic, people. Logic. That's what I mean. It, just, like, it, just, uh, it exactly. doesn't make sense. Exactly. That was How, my only. It's sad with to it. think I mean, that this match doesn't... was better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it, they they had nine falls in thirty minutes, and this fight only took <laughs> one fall for about the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. That that was it. Oh, and uh, Triple H's golden shovel got melted into uh, Rollins' golden boot. So. <laughs> We know who's carrying the, the, the oh, torch God. now. Yeah, what was up with that attire, man? Both guys yeah, had horrendous apparently. attire. It was, it was dated, supposed to be. Yeah, dated Thanos. Yeah. Thing. But then you had yeah, the apparently. crappy, shitty design of the icy title on Dolph Ziggler's trunks. I'm going... Uh, 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 Rick, Rick, Dolph, Ziggler, uh, Dolph Ziggler trying to challenge Ravishing Rick Rude by doing yeah. that. Nah, I thought yeah, it was poorly it, done. Poorly done. Horrible. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to throw in my two cents before we take it over to James. I thought this match was okay. Definitely better than their match last month. Honestly, I fell asleep probably because this match was so long. I thought the match was okay. And you know we got a long pay-per-view when we get an entrance. Hold up. Can I stop? You fell asleep? I fell asleep. 
to all you to all you people to all you you Twitter haters out there, yeah, yeah, you people that, that tell us to, to call us smarks, uh, you know, all the 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 the, 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 the marky people and say, oh, just accept it, you know, all you people out there. Can you tell me once or one time you heard someone say, oh yeah, I was watching that takeover match and I fell asleep? No, tell one. me, tell me when. Exactly. And this was between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler for the IC title. Enough said. Very much. Very much. Go ahead, Michael. Say, Enough said. To throw back what Kyle was saying, I actually watched NXT TakeOver twice. For here, SummerSlam, I was in and out, and I was thinking to myself, should I watch SummerSlam again to get in my notes? I said, hell no, I'm not watching this. <laughs> Whatever I saw, I saw. But TakeOver, I watched again because it was just so great. Mm-hmm. But uh, back to what I was saying, and I'll end it with this. You know you have a long pay-per-view when you have two people who are not involved in the direct match, Dean Ambrose and Drew McIntyre, have their own entrance for no reason. Yeah. Why did <laughs> Dean Ambrose, why did Dean Ambrose open the show? Dean Ambrose were not in this match. They're not in the direct match. They're, they're basically valets and Dean managers. Ambrose opened what the show. Did... Why wasn't it Seth Rollins? My goodness. Yes, my God. You talk about how they ruin everything. I mean, jeez. Why is this so poorly produced? Why is this night and day difference? This is supposed to be the main show, and you can't produce it right. No. Oh. Yeah. James, finish it off. Your opinion about this match. Um, boy, I mean, I, I'm with Michael Chow, and I was wide awake at this point, boy. I, I thought I got some NyQuil, NyQuil slipped into my, um, you know, <laughs> into my whiskey. I mean, I started dozing off, and I'm like, why am I falling? Why am I dozing off during Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins in the first 10 minutes? The only thing that was interesting in this match in the first 10 minutes was Dean Ambrose circling around the ring stopping Drew McIntyre and, and every turn. And by the way, can we stop with people who aren't wrestling on the night of the pay-per-view or the r- event that they're on wearing wrestling attire? Can you wear street clothes, please? <laughs> Drew McIntyre's out there. He looks like a badass, but you're not wrestling, so why are you in your wrestling gear? Right. I mean, Someone's got to explain that. To be fair, if I look like McIntyre, I'd probably be walking around in my underwear all day anyway. <laughs> oh, Stop man. It. By, the, by the way, can I point something out? I, I haven't watched SmackDown in a, or the main roster in a long time. I hate Drew McIntyre's new entrance music. Okay? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I love his version. It, yeah, the NXT version was so much better. So corny. Oh, the my, dang, dang, like. <laughs> it's like they're, they're doing it now for the new people. Mm-hmm. They did it with Sonya Deville. It's like once you get called up from NXT – Vince McMahon man, has to basically destroy you. Put the put, put the main roster the stamp. stamp on it. Yeah. My goodness. But, yeah. Anyway, guys, we're moving on. Before we get into the next match, we had a segment, which I feel like we have to talk about. You guys can throw in your two cents. But before our next match, we got a backstage segment where Renee Young interviewing the Bella Twins. This segment got booed. And let me tell you the exact moment when this got booed. Renee Young was asking them a simple question about whether or not they're going to be a part of this all women's, all women's pay per view, and then they go on to promote their shows, <sighs> promote everything that they're on. Okay, people in Brooklyn booed the shit out of this because it deserves to be. This was awful. If you guys have your two cents, go ahead and say it. But this was, oh my goodness, this was awful, absolutely awful. A- everything. Everything that is wrong, that was wrong before, before Stephanie McMahon decided, decided to go ahead and take credit for everything, and then masquerade divas with the word women, and then use cool words like revolution. You know what a revolution is? A revolution is fighting against the establishment, fighting against a government. The Boston Tea Party is a revolution. The French Revolution is a revolution. The Industrial Revolution is a revolution. This is nothing but masquerading behind a mask of trash. Stop it. Stop it. And nobody, nobody wants to see the Bell Twins. Maybe Tiffany. Maybe. That's about it. I'm choosing not to comment because I thought this was complete utter trash. So I'm going (laughs) to let Brian go ahead. Well, James, I would have to 100% disagree with you. 
<laughs> I will stare at the Bella Twins all goddamn day. And you want to speak revolution? I had a revelation. When the hell did Brie Bella get hotter than Nikki? Jesus <laughs> Christ, that chick is hot. But these guys look like... It, they were so out of place. They were like that drunk friend at a club or at a bar. Like, like you're having a conversation and just standing there. Like, they 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 brought nothing to the table the whole week. They they showed up on on um on SmackDown and they finally brought out Brie. But they they came out for the whole Ronda Rousey thing. They came out on. It's like, what <sighs> are you guys doing here? Like, you literally had no no reason to be here. Kind of like James on the show. But anyway. It's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was bad. It was pointless, and 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 who cares? There we go. All right, guys, we are moving on to our next match. Thank it's God. another title match. You guys can call this, nickname this pay per view Clash of Champions because every single title is apparently being defended here. We have the New Day taking on the Bludgeon Brothers for the tag team championship. I'm actually gonna go first, guys. I'm gonna read you something direct from my notes. It's very short. I put New Day versus Bl- uh, Bludgeon Brothers, shit ending, and that's it. That's enough for me. James, let's take it over to you. New Day versus Bludgeon Brothers. I, I, I'm I going to be short, too. Um, I didn't care. And the fact that you made the Bludgeon Brothers, who were supposed to be an amazing, dominant tag team, that Eric Roman just whips out the hammer and just ends it because why? The New Day was kicking a little too much ass. That's weak, and that's not pay-per-view worthy. We were just talking about demolition and the Heart Foundation, and we've fallen to this. They did a bunch of stupid spots that I didn't give a fuck about. They did a bunch of nonsense, reckless bullshit that's supposed to garner cheap pops, the people who don't know anything about wrestling. Um, boring, a waste of my time, and again, I went and got another drink. So that's about it. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, you know, Xavier Wood has to. Uh, Vince has to make Xavier Wood's top elbow drop to the outside outdo Velveteen Dream's elbow drop from oh, Takeover. You noticed right? that too, didn't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Vince going, yeah. you gotta outdo this NXT. Yeah. Anyway, Kyle, we take it over to you. We got the Bludgeon Brothers, who seemingly a team that could not be defeated, finally getting defeated by a team that did not get over. I mean, heaven forbid we give it to Sanity. But what'd you think about this match? I was very shocked that the New Day didn't win the titles here because I thought 100% we were going to get some fuck finish and the New Day was going to win the championship here, whether it be throwing pancakes in the Bludgeon Brothers' face and that would blind them or something stupid and goofy. The fact that we got a disqualification, I can't really say I'm shocked because I was like, oh, yeah, this is typical main roster. I knew they weren't going to do anything great to finish this match. We're getting it at the second match in the show. Was it the second match of the card? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, I was just like, meh. Like, it was a meh thing to me. I was like, meh. I wasn't really disappointed. I'm like, sure, I bet you that they have a rematch on SmackDown, which they did. And guess what? The New Day won the titles. Duh. Five, five yeah. time. Five time. Five time. Five time. Get out of uh, my face. Like I said before, and I said it in part one, I'm just sick and tired of them pushing this agenda of making New Day win as many titles as possible before they end their career. That's There's a good way to do it, and there's a shitty, terrible, push-down-our-throats way to do it, and that's exactly what they're doing. They found a way to make it shitty the first title reign because they're like, well, you got to beat Demolition's reign. Mm-hmm. So they sacrificed the whole damn division to make sure the New Day would just win every single damn match and keep the titles because Demolition sued the WWE. So we have to just break and erase that. So That's all I got to say about that. (laughs) All right, perfect. Well, you know, Bludgeon Brothers stands for Brian. So, Brian, take it over. (laughs) The Bludgeon Brothers causing the DQ. Why didn't they do it earlier in the match and get it over with? I don't know, because they don't want a short match on this card, on this pay-per-view card, right? That's for the other ones. So what would you think about this match, Brian? Well, Michael, you started off by saying uh, the best way to describe this match was a shit ending. Uh, Jabroni James just said the match was shitty. (laughs) As I mentioned earlier, during the 205 live match, I want to go get some pizzas. Mm Mm-hmm. Shit is exactly what I was doing while this match was on. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I was too busy regretting the pizza. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, the whole SmackDown title win was an audible because of the, I think, a Rowan got injured. Got injured so yeah. who knows if maybe they were supposed to keep on to these, keep on with the belts for a while. But New Day Tag Team Champions. Next match, uh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Real quick, real quick. I know I, my part's over, but I just want to say, why was this not Bludgeon Bros versus Sanity? And by the way, I just wanted to say a perfect way they could have done this is if you had Sanity versus Bludgeon Brothers, you could have had Nikki Cross come out here, cost Sanity the match, and then Nikki Cross reveal that her birth name is Sister Abigail. That's this not, whole crazy thing go on, that's but they're not allowed not on the main roster. That's not allowed. Can't have heel versus heel. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> not allowed. And not allowed. And Sanity's Triple H's creation. So, you know, that's Triple H's dream creation. I just want everybody to know that when you see them lose week after week after week. That's Triple H's dream creation. And look what they're doing to it. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right, guys, we get into a next match. It's not for a title this time, but it is for the first time in a long time, which the commentators plug. It's actually going to be for the Money in the Bank briefcase. <laughs> it, is, it, it is a rematch from last month, but this time Kevin Owens is not fallen. Well, if you want to talk about his career, he's fallen, but we're talking about Braun Strowman beating Kevin Owens in one minute and 50 seconds. The amount of this match is the amount of time that Kyle will have to talk about this match. Kyle, go ahead and talk about your favorite, Kevin Owens, jobbing the Braun Strowman for the briefcase. Why was this for the briefcase? Who knows? Why was this not in the pre-show? Who knows? Kyle, take keep it away. it shorter than that and give it one you got word. A minute, you got a minute and 50 seconds. I'm giving you 10 seconds less, and I'm giving you the exact time that this match was. And I'm giving one you minute, one word. Seconds. Bullshit. That's what I give this match. They ruined Kevin Owens. They made this guy come out in a... In a believable outfit that I honestly thought I'm like okay now they have to do it but I'm like fuck this is way too serious this is way too obvious now. What I'm pissed about is they they made it into a squash match. This is literally Goldberg and Kevin Owens 2.0. Literally almost mimic the same exact thing. I'm just oh. <laughs> I've lost all hope for my own boy Kevin Owens on the main roster. That's it. Bullshit. Move on. I'm done. By the way, if if you guys have listened to the show. This is coming from a guy, Kyle, who on the prediction show said that he said that Kevin Owens was going to win the Money in the Bank briefcase and cash in in the main event. And I've lost. We got at this point, I lost all hope of SummerSlam. I that, <laughs> after this, I was like, okay, SummerSlam's ruined. It's done. The main event's going to be fuck it, fucky. I'm done with it. There you go. All right. Well, you know, Braun stands for Brian. I'm gonna do this for every wrestler that's name starts with a B. I so, like Brian, it. take it over. Braun Strowman. Briefcase is on the line against Kevin Owens. What do you think about this match? Well, uh, my my biggest gripe with this match is the whole build for this match was the fact that no matter what Braun did, he would lose the the briefcase, whether it was DQ, pinfall, and that didn't play into the match at all. Like that whole storyline didn't even have to exist no. for this match to happen. There was no, there was no weapons. There was no Jinder Mahal interference. There was no, there was absolutely nothing that went into the build. Manifested in the match, nothing. We got we got a KO burial. We got no Jinder Mahal, which ruined the event for me. It it it, it literally, the the build. It, you you couldn't have, you could have had absolutely zero build and had the same outcome. I don't know who KO pissed off in the back. I don't know if he ate all the catering before the show or whatnot, but <laughs> it, it, it it's it's sad, and I, I was a KO mark. I was there when he won in Anaheim, the IC belt. To see where he's gone from, from there to here is just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. All right, I'm going to take it over to myself. Yeah, I'm going to take it to myself before I take it over to James. You know, for those of you who saw the Kevin Owens, and it's a great show, guys. The Kevin Owens, uh, what was it, 365 mm-hmm. show they have. Yeah. He was talking about how at SummerSlam a couple of years ago, he was teaming with Chris Jericho against Big Cass and Enzo at SummerSlam. And he thought that was a huge downgrade for himself. Now, Kevin Owens is back at SummerSlam, losing to Braun Strowman in 1 minute and 50 seconds. Kevin Owens, I'll see you at the next 
episode of Kevin Owens 365, and I'll just leave it at that. I agree with everything that everyone said. Do we need to have this match? No. Why was it in the pre? Why was it not in the pre-show? This Why do we have been the this first match of the pre-show? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's this was dumb. We did not need to have the stipulation. Brian was right. James, go ahead and take it over. Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. Did the briefcase even need to be on the line, James? I, I don't even know. I don't even know what they were even thinking. I, I just don't get it. Um, the same guy that I used to watch as fucking Kevin Steen, Kill Steen Kill in Ring of Honor. I used to go to Rahway, New Jersey. I used to go to the I used to go to the Elks Lodge. I used to go to the Manhattan Center and watch this guy perform against Nakamura, Samoa Joe, Jim Cornette, um, create a group named Scum and mm-hmm. p- perform all over the place. Yep. And this was this. The bumps that this guy takes, this company is basically trying to kill Kevin Owens. Literally and figuratively trying to kill Kevin Owens. That I had to sit there and watch this right. for a minute and 50 seconds. You know what? I knew at that moment that this was truly summer scam. And I don't know if KO took the last chocolate chip muffin and catering and Vince wanted it. I don't know what happened. But something happened. This is pathetic, and it's shit like this, which is why no one will be over. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, no more money in the bank because, of course, Alexa Bliss cash in. So we got to get back into another title match, guys. This is involving the women. You know we got to promote them. Huge pay-per-view involving the women coming up. We have Charlotte Flair. She's back, and she's brought Ooh. some double Ds with her. Mm-hmm. Charlotte Flair t- defeating Hashtag Becky Drago and Carmella, her reign, the woman who defeated Asuka two times, the woman who defeated Charlotte after she had beaten Asuka's streak, finally falls. Charlotte Flair winning out. I'm going to throw in my two cents. I mean, I thought this match was okay. Did Charlotte need to be in this match? I mean, I I assumed he got something big planned for the WWE Evolution pay-per-view. Um, during our prediction show, I predicted Charlotte Flair versus Trish Stratus. They're obviously not going with that, so I have no idea where they're going now. I'll just point out the fact that after Charlotte Flair won, she was booed out of the building. <laughs> James, let's go ahead and take it over to you. What do you think about Charlotte Flair defeating Becky Drago and Carmella? By the way, it's a Rocky movie uh, reference, guys, if you guys get it. Yeah. But James, take it over. I just think it's hilarious how Charlotte again wins another fucking women's title um the only saving grace of this would have been if this turns into bitch charlotte and you get becky lynch eventually getting the win that everybody wants her to get wwe quote unquote turns becky heel but the entire barclays center couldn't stop cheering after Mm -hmm. becky lynch beat down Charlotte for stealing her spotlight, for stealing her, worming her way into a triple threat match, for breaking up the disarmor with the natural selection, which, by the way, was god-awful and sloppy. And can we stop with the Charlotte moonsaults? They are horrible. They hit nobody. Uh, I mean, a blind chihuahua can do a better (laughs) moonsault than you. Okay? (laughs) I mean, please. I mean... It's like a blimpy sandwich with heavy on the mayonnaise. No need for it. All right? No need for it. So, I, and then they double down on their bullshit on SmackDown, and they have Becky Lynch go ahead and say, you fans were never behind me. Did you hear 17,000 people roar your name when so you stupid. fucking killed Charlotte? Why did they do that? I, it, 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 all I can say the is this company is delusional. The fact delusional. That, well, the fact the, that wait, they to saw be the fair, reaction, whoa, hold, on. <laughs> hold, hold on, James. Do you know how much work Road Dog went into putting together these script? If you think Road Dog is going to change Becky Lynch's script, you are insane, pal. But oh. yeah. Anyway, let's go. Let's go ahead and take it over. Becky Lynch, of course. B and Becky stands for Brian. Let's take over to Brian. Brian, what do you think about this? Triple threat. Charlotte Flair finds her way into this match and eventually wins the title against Becky Lynch and Carmella. Well, I'm going to go with the unpopular opinion. We talked about this in our group chat a couple days ago, but 
This match, Becky does not stand, or B does not stand for Becky. Carmella is Brian. I don't care what anyone says. She <laughs> held her own in this match. Easily the best Carmella match. The thing with, okay, Carmella is what she is. And at least a trend. she plays. Oh, you you watch your mouth. You watch your damn mouth. <laughs> you want to talk trying to just talk shit? Oh, I'm not even gonna go with the Baszler jokes <laughs> here. But look, she she she's called a diva, and she says I am 100 percent a diva. She is not gonna give you a five star match. She is gonna go out there and be <laughs> her character. Five star match. She, but she's gonna be what she is. But then we go and have Charlotte and Becky coming out here talking about women's evolution. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But she comes out here with looking like she stuffed the fucking Bella Twins in her tits, <laughs> bouncing around the the fucking ring. <laughs> and, but but I'm not supposed to stare at them. And I'm not supposed to call them out because it, it's you're, I'm I'm a sexist and, and women's evolution. I could not she, stop looking. I literally just, think, I was just there. That's were, the only thing that I was staring I at the entire match. The fucking, I thought they were CGI fucking graphics like the rest of the show had. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for them to rupture again, too. I'm going, oh, my God, man. They're doing so, moves here. So, I'm going, what? The, to me, the match was, I'm not going to say the best match of the night, but it was the funnest match of the night because of the storytelling, because of, <laughs> because of the fact that it, it was it was, oh, it was Ten fun. seconds, Brian. You give me another twenty. It was it was. Fun. I'll give you fifteen. All right. I'll, I'll take Kyle's, Speaking of stopwatches, I'll take Kyle's extra minute. Um, it was fun. It was okay. It was. I don't. You don't. Every match doesn't need to be a five star match. It was what Summer it was. Does. Oh, if it was on NXT, it would have been great. I'm um, just saying it's SummerSlam. This is the, this is where you have these matches. Not you can have a, these types of matches at other pay per views like B level ones like Hell in the Cell where you you know you're not you're supposed to care as much. It's a SummerSlam where they build us the biggest party of the summer. It's the mm-hmm. big four pay per view. This is where you have these matches, Brian. You don't give me yeah, I, shitty I, matches I, I get, at, and, I get and it. cool entertaining matches at SummerSlam. It's we talked about this earlier. It's a little bit for everyone. And this was this match was exactly what it was supposed wow. to be, and you can't you can't take away from that. If I can chime in with my thirty seconds here, um, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Kyle, I'll take it away. My prediction came true. I knew as as soon as they added Charlotte to this match, she was winning. There was no way in hell they have the creative minds to pick a different winner in this case. And lo and behold, Charlotte has to win every single goddamn title and every single title match she's in. And of course, they pick her. And they do this. Look what they did. They fucking just ruined Becky Lynch in a matter of two days. They just made her come out and say, you were never behind me. The fact that they made her say that after the reaction she got at SummerSlam and the reaction she was getting mid-script. Why? Did they think the reaction was going to be any different from Sunday to Tuesday? That just, again, this just defines... What creative is on the main roster? Absolutely trash. Let's move on. Charlotte is seven wins away, seven on title reigns away from her father. By the way, All right, well, enough said. Holla at me, Carmella. Holla at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're moving on to our next match here. The WWE Championship is in the middle of the card, but this should not surprise anyone. A match I thought, honestly, did not get the build I thought it could have gotten, but man, did this match deliver? We got Samoa Joe. Winning by disqualification against AJ Styles, but of course, WWE rules, and the rules have to be enforced by disqualification. The title does not switch hands. Let's go ahead and start with, since there's no one's name in here that starts with B, we'll go ahead and start with Brian. Brian, what'd you think of Samoa Joe, AJ Styles for the WWE Championship match? This match, um, I feel about it the same way I felt about the, um, Careful now. EC3, the EC3 match. It, it was slow to begin, picked up. Um, you know, they, of course, it's AJ Styles, it's it's Samoa Joe. You're gonna have a great match. I just, it's the only, the only thing I can say is I, I I feel like these hype matches with AJ Styles, you know, Nakamura, AJ Styles, now Samoa Joe, they just don't seem to live up to the hype a lot of the times. And this again feels like it might be heading that way. The only difference is we're actually gonna get story telling with this match which you're unfortunately you're not going to get with Nakamura so that's the only I guess silver lining for me on this match it, it was okay 
Um, it's obviously going to, you know, head down to Survivor Series or the Rumble. But the, the thing I'm looking most forward to is is, is the storytelling, the, the the I'm your daddy stuff is great. It's mm-hmm. it's all it's all fun and it's all fun and just to see a more edgier styles is is gonna be a, is gonna be fun. Mm-hmm. There you go. And what great promo work by Samoa Joe. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Kyle. Take it. Why don't you go ahead and take about this? Samoa Joe's great promo work beginning this match, during this match, and was this ending justified? Because we got a bad DQ finish for the tag team championship. What did you think about the DQ finish in this I'm match? Kyle, take it away. Shockingly surprised we had something good on this entire card. I was very, very shocked. I know I gave zero credit to this because of what we they did with Nakamura and Styles at WrestleMania and how much of a shitty uh, labeled uh, dream match that was and then the seven matches they had afterwards. To me, I think they did a better job than what they did with Styles Nakamura. I thought the... Yeah, the match was kind of slow at first, but then it, it did pick up a little bit. Um, but uh, this this has been the case with every AJ Styles and Samoa Joe match, even back when they were in TNA. Um, the best part was were the end of it, where you guys just said the story of uh, Samoa Joe. I think the DQ was justifiable in this case because of what we got after him going up on the table, grabbing the mic and said, it looks like your daddy's not coming home. I'll be your daddy. I mean, that just added like <laughs> a whole nother level to this entire feud and it, it, it continuing on from, from then on. I'd rather have hit happened earlier in the build-up lead to SummerSlam. The only way I can see this being justifiable, if it, it's tough because if you think about it going to Survivor Series, then you need to keep Joe and Styles away from the Survivor Series traditional team. You're not going to do a Team Styles and a Team Joe. That wouldn't make sense for the the feud and how they're building it so far. You're going to have to have the conclusion all the way up to Survivor Series. You're going to have to keep these guys feuding and fighting each other from now until Survivor Series. Um, Or maybe you... uh, And I love the idea of including Miz eventually into this and having Samoa Joe costing AJ Styles the match and uh, the Miz taking the WWE Championship and that making AJ Styles even more mad and adding more intensity to this feud. So that's what I'm going to say about that. All right, perfect. And, James, finally we take it over to you. You know, we have AJ Styles retaining as champion. He is slowly catching up to Brock Lesnar's infamous reign of being a (laughs) one-year champion. Uh, Of course, he's on the cover of WWE 2K18. Uh, My question to you is, do you think AJ – oh, 19. Sorry about that. Eh, dates. But anyway, uh, (laughs) with with, Bosh, Bosh. (laughs) <laughs> Only on the main roster, guys, in my botching. But uh, with Brock Lesnar leaving to the UFC, do you number one, do you think AJ Styles, do you think they're going to have him beat Brock Lesnar's reign as that infamous one-year champion? And also tell me about this match, what you thought of it. But do you think since Brock Lesnar's leaving for UFC, are they going to have AJ Styles catch up to Brock Lesnar's one-year championship reign? I don't think it's going to get to that point. Um, in order for that to happen, he's got to keep it the rest of this year and throughout – I think Money in the Bank next year, around that period of time, it's around 500 days. So it's that that's way too long. Um, I, he's gonna he's gonna lose that title before that. I I'd, I just want to say real quick that I would rather have AJ Styles beat oh, CM Punk's record obviously. than Brock Lesnar be the one who beat CM Punk's record. Well, Brock so. Lesnar didn't beat any records because he was <laughs> barely on the show, and yeah. you can you can probably you can count on one hand how many title defenses he actually had. So I, I please that rain means absolutely nothing with a fruit roll up belt. But um this match in particular, and I'm gonna go toward Brian's point and then I'm gonna bring it down. This was better than two or out of the this My was this was better than what that noise was. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> this was this was better than two or three of the AJ Styles Nakamura matches. And I full heart heartily agree that that first match that they had at WrestleMania, it was hyped and hyped and hyped to the point where they could have went out there and tore the house down in New Orleans, but it was sabotaged and they were held back. Mm -hmm. I still will always agree with JD and believe that, that they were sabotaged and told to make sure to not tear the house down because there's no reason why they couldn't tear the house down. And WWE has this habit of having matches that everybody wants to see and then everybody doesn't show you everything that they could do with the first match because they have other matches coming along down the pike. So 
you're going to start seeing when Samoa Joe and AJ go in the ring again, you're going to see them go all out on a C-level pay-per-view when they should have went all out on, quote-unquote, the other WrestleMania of the year. But I have no problem with the finish because I felt what, what Joe said justified AJ Styles doing what he did. And it, lead, it, it gives Samoa Joe a win over AJ. Now we can claim that AJ is a coward and he had to save his title and all this other stuff. So it plays into that. Joe can just keep talking about the daddy talk, keep the Wendy talk going. And it leads into Hell in a Cell, which I wish that pay-per-view would go away and just do a regular Hell in a Cell match on a regular pay-per-view. But um, I know the, the match itself, to Brian's point, it did start out slow. That's how usually a lot of Samoa Joe matches start. It's a slow boil until a, you know, until a climax. Mm-hmm. But I have no problem. The last 10 minutes of that match was fucking amazing. So I have no problem with the, that whatsoever. Michael, we can't hear you. <laughs> Damn it. Bust a mini over here, Michael. <laughs> Sorry, guys. My mic was muted. But, yeah, that's all I was saying. The WWE Championship for SmackDown Live setting the bar very, very high, guys. Let's see if the Universal title from Raw can outdo them. All right, guys, we take it to the next match, the longest match of the night, uh, a match that is about, what did they say, seven years in the making, guys? Yeah. We have yeah. The Miz finally taking on his protege from NXT, Daniel Bryan. And with a name like that, how can we not start with Bryan? Bryan, what do you think of this? The match has finally come. The Miz finally defeats his student, Daniel Bryan. What do you think of this match? Miz being accompanied to the ring by Maurice, in a way, taking on Daniel Bryan. Yeah, as soon as I saw that baby carriage, I was like, throw the baby into the ring. Let's get this going. Like, <laughs> I wanted uh, Miz to... Uh, Hit Brian with the baby, just go all out. Oh, God. <laughs> but, um, couple, couple things with this one. Number one is, you, we just saw Brie Bella about forty minutes before this match. Where the hell was she when all this was going down? All the, all the shenanigans outside the ring. Oh yeah. It's like you guys, you guys shoot yourself in the foot. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, if you're gonna do that pointless. Bella's interview, have it after this match. Mm-hmm. You you literally just said, well, um, the Miz, the Miz and Maurice became the faces in this because they're the happy family. I think I know Maurice, why. This. Maurice has Miz's back. Where the hell is Bree? I have, I have, I think I have, I think I know why they did this. I think, um, I, th- I really don't think Daniel Bryan re-signed with the company. If he did, I, it was for a one match, one off with this, this quote-unquote mixed tag team they're going to do and after that brian's gone i think that he signed a little bit of an extension like not that might be so, a he, was, so he wouldn't so he be wouldn't an all in. all in exactly yeah. and then but this is a punishment for not re-signing long term that's my guess because WWE would do something like that don't tell me they wouldn't i i i wouldn't doubt it i mean though the other i guess the other side of the coin was i was thinking with this whole um I, I, I don't know where I saw – is it for the, the Australian match where the winner gets the title shot? I didn't Did you guys see that? Like that. No, yeah, I, I so they just they who... just announced some kind of match where The Miz and Brian are fighting, and whoever wins that gets a future title shot. Really? I'm not too sure what event that's going down at, but what I think is obviously The Miz wins that match – and we're going to have, you guys just talked about it, AJ Styles isn't going to carry this belt for another two years. No. That's where you have AJ drop the belt to Miz, and you have the whole Brian gets his comeuppance world champion at either the Rumble or WrestleMania. Have the Miz have his one last title shot as a main event guy. He's more than proven himself worthy the last two, three years. Everyone wants it. He's gonna, he's the t- he is the top heel of the company. I don't care what anyone says. The Miz is uh, the Roman. top deal in the company. Oh Jesus! It's Ro- Roman's a <laughs> top deal. <deal-y. laughs> Dude, let the Miz have his 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 um you know six month title reign as the top deal. Have Brian chase him. You have Brian win at the Rumble or WrestleMania. Okay. I'm I'm trying to look up on my phone right now what event it is where Brian 
and Miz are facing well, off for that. Title. I know they're having a mixed tag match at Hell in the Cell. Are they adding that to the stipulation? I don't uh, know. On Google right now. Let me just say that you you know Maurice ain't getting physical as hell in that match, so we're just getting a Brian and Miz rematch. So I, I think I think that. okay, so I think Okay, so the mix match challenge match that they're having is at Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. And I think what I read was Brian versus Miz in Australia, which is all the way to October. So obviously Brian has signed some kind of contract. Well, that's what I mean. I, I don't think it's that much of an extension. I think he just signed it enough so that he wouldn't show up at All In. I think Vince doesn't want Brian showing up at All In. And he, he's come out, and I think I read something today that he says that September is a bad month for promoting. So he doesn't want All In to overshadow anything that everybody's trying to do in September. So I really think he might have signed a contract extension too. Okay, so yeah, here it is. A little bit ahead of All In. Although the first two matches are slated simply for bragging rights, their next head-to-head brawl will be for the opportunity to earn a future WWE championship. And that's per WWE.com. So that's going to happen at the, hmm. yeah, at the Super Showdown. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, WWE, they never changes their matches, right? Mm, never, never, never. I don't know why they're going on social media and announcing matches. Why? Why couldn't? Why can't you just let it build again? Now we have to put Daniel Bryan and, and the Miz in the ring and beat it to smithereens with a baseball bat. Now, now we have to do that. And and and, and you, if you think for one solitary second they are gonna eat, they are gonna drag this out to WrestleMania and tell it right, you're sadly mistaken. They are not doing that. As for the match itself at SummerSlam. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed the match at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. And again, the video package was the best video package of the night. And when they want to tell a story, you see the work they put in. When they don't want to tell a story, you get the trash you get. This was done well. And poetry, all Daniel Bryan said was, I want to punch Miz in the face. And how did Miz win the match? Brass knuckles, punch in the face. Right. William Regal's old school William Regal style. Mm-hmm. Brass knucks to the face. Beautifully done. I have, I, I, you know what? I never thought of that angle, Kyle, of maybe it's just an extension. And as I, I heard that Daniel Bryan wanted creative control, mm-hmm. wanted creative control over who he wrestled against, didn't want to have pointless matches. Wanted to have 50 to 100 matches a year. Yeah, that's why I don't have any faith in them and people saying, oh, they're going to drag this on. They're going to have their title match at WrestleMania. The fact that they already had a match at SummerSlam and we're going to get another rematch with mixed tag, then we're going to get another rematch at Super Showdown. Mm-hmm. I honestly think it's just a short contract extension. Then after Melbourne, Daniel Bryan's out. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Kyle, do you have anything else more to say nope. about this match? All right. Uh, I'm going to throw in my final two cents. Uh, I thought this was actually the best match of the night. It was handled very well. It lived up to the hype. The ending I thought was justified, and it just it, it was good storytelling. If this match was for the title, it would be great. And I, I do want to point out, you know, we, we've been naming a lot of matches. What might happen at WrestleMania? What might be happening in the next couple of months? If WWE is continuing their tradition of Raw versus SmackDown at Survivor Series, you guys really need to take into account who do you think, marketing-wise, would be good from Raw taking on SmackDown. If you guys remember last year, they basically changed almost every single match Mm -hmm. because the matches were just playing horrible. Mm -hmm. Did we we want to see? I I have no faith in Survivor Series anymore. I just don't care. I I think it's a bad idea. So in that case, I mean... Let's face it, Roman's going to take that title all the way to Survivor Series, but who do we want to see Roman take on at Survivor Series from SmackDown side? We'll have to wait and see. Is it going to be The Miz? I don't think so. Are we going to see that again? No, I don't think so. I'm so, telling you right now, we're not going to see Roman lose that championship for a very long time. Me Roman neither. is not dropping that title for a very long time. Let's just put that. Everyone's saying that, oh, we're creating more excitement now with Roman Reigns. Who's going to take the title off Roman Reigns? 
nobody for nobody. a very long time is taking. Now that they've gotten that Universal Championship on Roman Reigns, he's not dropping it to anybody. I'm telling you right now, this is going to lead, and I believe the rumors of the Shield triple threat, it's going to be for the Universal Championship. And guess what? Who's coming out out of that? Roman Reigns. He's mm-hmm. not dropping that title for a long time. I'm just, I hope everyone's ready for this. And while when later down the line we get to that point where people are like, oh, I'm sick and tired of Roman Reigns, the title, uh, we need a new champion, I'm going to be like, told you fucking so, nothing's going to change. I've said that, <laughs> I'm in the market right now. At this SummerSlam, I told you nothing was going to change. And guarantee you, it's not going to change. Mm-hmm. You know, since we're talking about Roman, you know, we had that desperate creative. And James, I think I texted you about this. The desperate creative of booking Alexa Bliss versus Trish Stratus. Guys, don't be surprised. And there are several rumors going around if we get Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship against The Rock at WrestleMania. Because a lot of rumors saying Ooh. that The Rock wants to be a part of yeah, WrestleMania next I, year. I heard it was, it's going to be Brock Rock, too. I mean, whew. oh, sh- we'll see. We'll see. Uh, come on. I mean, stop it. I mean, <laughs> doesn't he have, hey, doesn't not- he have- doesn't he have Skyscraper 2 to film? So that could maybe, be we'll get, maybe we'll get thrice in a lifetime. We'll get John Cena in The Rock. <laughs> Please. Oh, man. All right, gentlemen. We go from the longest match of the night to the shortest match of the night. We get Demon Finn Balor because he was so desperate. He has to be Constable Corbin. Demon Finn Balor taking on Baron Corbin. Baron starts with B. Let's take it over to Brian. Brian, what do you think about Constable Corbin taking on Demon Balor? Demon Balor's for everyone. But what do you think about the SummerSlam match? Not in Saudi Arabia. (laughs) (laughs) Where you're supposed to be. The match itself was whatever. Quick squash match. But the the thing I took away from the match was, uh, we talked about this earlier, was Baron Corbin selling the crap out of being afraid of the demon. He looked like he had just seen a ghost or a demon, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> his selling was just like, oh, what the hell is this? What, 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 what is this? What is... That was great. The match, I mean, uh, Kyle, insert fart noise, please, because he, who really did. cared? Quick squash match, whatever. I was hoping the rumors were true with where they were going with Balor's character and the demon would come out like a butterfly with the great rainbow paint on him and stuff like that. But... We got OG Demon. I popped. It was cool. It was a surprise. Nobody, Kyle, don't you dare say it. I saw I'm, coming. I'm, I'll tell you right now. I, I was actually hear. shocked. No, I was shocked. I was actually, no one, I, I'm, I'm going to no say, I was not expecting that. Um, I will give gripe to their shitty ass graphic work, but yeah, I was shocked. Yeah, it was, it was a nice surprise. I was wondering, me and my friends were like, why the hell? Is Balor and Corbin on so late? Like, we kept waiting for the restroom break match. We're like, this is going to be the restroom break match. Balor and Corbin's a restroom break match. And once it got later in the evening, we're like, why? What, what, what's something, you know? Once once the demon came out, we're like, oh, that's why it's on so late. But <sighs> who cares? He comes out next night as Smiley Finn. We'll see you uh, next year, demon. Shocker. <laughs> Ooh. All right, Kyle, we take it over to you. Finn Balor, I'm sorry, Demon Balor versus Constable Corbin, who is now officially the new acting GM of Monday Night Raw. Kyle, what would you think of this match? Again, like I said, I was shocked when we got the Demon. I didn't think they were going to do that. It's just a wrong situation for the Demon. Very, very wrong situation. The Demon character should be, and it's undefeated, and they're still they're doing this thing with the undefeated Demon. I was talking about it on Sunday. I'm like, if they wanted to keep this demon thing undefeated, they had a really good opportunity here to have done, if they wanted to do another Undertaker undefeated WrestleMania kind of thing, they could have done the same thing with the demon Balor at WrestleMania. If they wanted to keep that thing undefeated, have that at WrestleMania. Have that a WrestleMania type thing. Have it feel special for Finn and WrestleMania. To me, and me thinking this personally, demon Balor every single pay-per-view will get stale eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think maybe once a year at WrestleMania, make it a WrestleMania special thing where he changes it up every WrestleMania as a different kind of demon. But And if you're going to make it undefeated, have Balor be the next undefeated guy at WrestleMania. And you know, they, they deep down, they kind of want something else like this. To me, you could have incorporated the two. But as for this match, the fact that we got a squash match, so I'm like, 
I was going into this match with zero anything because the, f- the fact they're having a SummerSlam match is like, really, we just saw this match like five times already. Why are we having a SummerSlam? Oh, so we can have the demon for two minutes? Oh, we'll give you the demon, but you're only going to have two minutes. That's it, two minutes. Uh, that's all I can say about that. I really have nothing else to say. All right, James, we take it over to you. What would you think about Demon Balor defeating Constable Corbin? And I want to throw this in here. We got a short, unnecessary cameo appearance by the star of WWE Studios, the Condemned Part 2, Randy Orton, making his hands, his presence known here at SummerSlam. What do you think about Randy Orton's unnecessary cameo appearance, and what do you think about this match alone? I think Randy um... Orton... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the Jeff Hardy match. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That sorry, was gonna sorry. Say, yeah. Um, yeah just... Damn it, Michael. Botchamania. Botchamania. Sorry. Hey, guys. I fell asleep <laughs> during this pay-per-view. I literally had to watch, break this pay-per-view up in two hours a day. Big props out to James, Kyle, and Brian for watching this seven-hour pay-per-view in trash. It was God. tough. I had to drink this, a this, lot of this, this, <sighs> this, 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 ma- this match was trash, bro. This match was just, just utter trash. And I'm sorry. I, I Listen, you're going to tell me the people that Finn Balor has faced in the past that he brung the demon out for, Samoa Joe, Nakamura. I mean, the people he has faced that he Kevin brings Owens. the demon out for, Kevin Owens, yeah. Brooklyn One. Ray Wyatt. Constable Corbin. He needs to bring the demon out for Constable Corbin. Right. <laughs> well, just slap me in the face and call me Susan. I don't give a shit. I don't give a damn. Well said. Well said. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we just move on from there. I mean, Finn Balor's career is just going down the toilet. Hey, Finn, Finn Balor for Tiff. I promise you I say it. <laughs> Finn Balor. They've taken half of his arsenal away and from Prince Devitt in the Bullet Club. And once again, this is just WWE being hoarders. We have to hoard from New Japan. And Finn Balor's here. He's on the roster. And that's it. We're not going to do anything with him. We're not going to give him a title reign. You know, it would have been really interesting if he came out as a demon on Raw against Reigns. But we're not going to do anything interesting. We're just going to put him out there, two-minute match. Waste of time. We can move on to the next segment. All right, guys. Since I botched with the whole Randy Orton thing, I'm not even going to talk about the Finn Balor and Baron Corbin match. In fact, since I botched, I'm not going to even talk about the next match. But we go into the United States Championship match, a rematch from last month because that one was a mere, I what, totally eight forgot seconds? This happened. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and take it over to Kyle. You first. What do you think about Randy Orton's short cameo appearance, I think, in this match? And what do you also think about Shinsuke Nakamura? Clean victory over Jeff Hardy. That's all I got to say about that. All right. I'm, I really don't care. <laughs> I, I re- I'm sorry. I really don't care about this. Dave ruined Shinsuke Nakamura. The only thing good that they've done is made his theme song a little bit cooler. Um, to me, I, 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 I to, you want to want to know the level of care I had for this match? I sent out a tweet jokingly saying, uh, uh, "Fun fact: uh, Jeff Hardy uh, closes his eyes when he wants to stay awake." <laughs> I, I I just I I couldn't for the life of me I couldn't get invested into this match. It is what it is. I'm I'm glad that Nakamura uh re uh won the match and uh he retained, right? This much I care yeah, he about. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. he did. Okay. That's much I care about it cuz I forgot. Um sure. I mean pfft. to me it felt like a, a SmackDown title match. There is nothing SummerSlam feelish about this. I really just yeah, nothing to nothing for me. I'm, I apologize. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fair enough, James. Let's take it over to you. Shinsuke Nakamura, clean victory over Jeff Hardy. No one's hands getting shaked by Randy Orton. He changes his mind, heads to the back because a lawsuit's probably in hand. But what do you think about this match? Uh, I mean, I'm looking for fucks to give. I'm looking high and low, guys. Can't find any. Um. 
Listen, Jeff Hardy, I, I love you, and I know you're broken down from over the years and years and years of putting your body in peril to entertain all of us for the last 20-some-odd years. Can we stop with the swanton bombs, okay, unnecessarily? Uh, and the fact that we fall on a ring apron, just – I'm going to use a term from what JR said, irresponsible and just un- – Unnecessary to do a, to do a, to do a bump like that in a match no one cares about in a match no one's gonna remember. Okay, what is the purpose of doing that? I don't get it. It didn't make any sense to do that. So that was stupid. And then we got Randy Orton coming out, and I guess they were serving fresh fried chicken. And um, Randy Owen got a whiff and had to go oh back. God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know and what I was. Heard, I don't know what was. Going and I on heard there. it was on the the Mark Henry buffalo sauce recipe. <laughs> so I mean, I, I heard that. Listen, you get a whiff of that, you need a you need a few you need a few strips. So Randy Owen had to go back and get some. I mean, how can you resist? Mark again, Henry was back there cooking. I bring this up again. This is supposed to be a well produced <laughs> show. <laughs> this is supposed to be right on the dot. This is a professional company, one of the biggest shows of the year, and they can't produce something so simple. That's like the eighth mistake of the show at that point. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I really don't get it. I How could we sit here and call NXT the minor leagues when shit like this happens all the time, man? It, it's, it's garbage. Terrible. All right, last but not least, we take it over to Brian. Brian, what do you think of Jeff Hardy being defeated, U.S. Championship being retained by Shinsuke? And I do believe if you guys watch SmackDown Live, he has a new gimmick. He's now known as Shinsuke Knock America. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, fucking feel bad for that guy. <laughs> Poor Brian. Nakamura. I'll just say I'm not a Canadian. Just saying. Jesus. Uh... So, uh, <laughs> Kyle. What? In front of everyone in the chat, <laughs> in front of Michael, in front of Jabroni James. <laughs> Tiffany, <laughs> Tiffany, you're in the chat. Brandy, you're in the chat. I'm calling you out. What? You have one week. The next show we have. I want you to produce evidence of Shayna Baszler being a female. <laughs> I'm calling you all right now. Oh, my God. (laughs) We have witnesses on the show. We have witnesses in the chat. You have one week. You come on here and defend this man every week. I'm going to keep it Saying that he's a woman. I'm going to keep it PG, and I'm going to send you why why I know she's a woman over DM. And then you'll come out on the show next week and say, okay, you were right. Because Shayna Baszler doesn't shake anyone's hands. That's how we know. No. no. Mm-hmm. Damn it, Michael. Mm-hmm. He's right. I that that's all I that's all I have to say about this match. You have one <laughs> week. One week, Kyle. Fair enough. All right, let's move on. All right, guys, we are moving on. It is the shortest title match of the night. It's a match in the making, guys. It's Ronda Rousey being accompanied to the ring by Natalia, who gets her own entrance theme against Alexa Bliss. For the Women's Championship for Raw. And Ronda Rousey wins with a submission. Only takes four minutes. They're in the ring celebrating. Natalia's in the ring. Mm -hmm. Nikki's in the ring. Why was Brie Bella out for this match but not out for Daniel Bryant, her husband's match? Who knows? (laughs) Well, let's go ahead and start with you, Brian. What would you think about Ronda Rousey? She's only been in the company for a couple of months. Finally, and I use that term very loosely, winning the title. What would you think of this match? They live up to your expectations. Um, Alexa Bliss, holla at me any day you want. I don't care what these guys say. You don't need to take a bump. You don't need to do anything. You just stand there in that ring and you look beautiful. Ronda Rousey, on the other hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we, wa- are we watching a wrestling show or a Victoria's Secret runway? I, 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 don't, I don't really care. Uh, uh, yo, this, Brian's on that uh, Dave Meltzer juice. Yes. Only about the looks. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sexist. Not about the scale. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ronda Rousey. Okay, let's get serious here. 
Alexa Bliss. Okay, so I hate the fact that the WWE. The, uh, see, I'm already stuttering. The WWE picks and chooses when they want aspects of real life to be part of any match. Mm-hmm. So, in real life, yes, Ronda Rousey would destroy Alexa Bliss. It, it, it would be a squash a squash match in real life. But you can't have Alexa Bliss have a match with. Nia Jax that goes triple the amount of time of this. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna be base a match based on realism, it's gotta be consistent. You know what? Alexa Bliss is supposed to be a smarter heel than the dumb baby faces usually are. Baby faces mm-hmm. are always dumb in the ring, always. The whole storyline was Alexa Bliss is smart. She's gonna outwit her. She didn't do anything. She 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 didn't well, do. Well, for one, anything. she can't. She sucks. Mm-hmm. She can't wrestle. Mm-hmm. She just sucks. Two, mm-hmm. she barely took any bumps because all they did was work her arm. She, she rolled out of the ring half the time. They really didn't do anything because she's afraid to take bumps. So mm-hmm. everything, I, I everything, think... all the criticism we have on Alexa Bliss literally showed itself in this match. Exactly. I don't know if you guys remember I mentioned a couple months ago. The whole reason we got this matchup was for the one visual of Ronda Rousey bending Bliss's arm backwards because because Bliss is double jointed. That's all this match was for. <laughs> this That's goes what back they kept to what zooming. I say. They sacrifice good product just to push shit, and it makes they like, zoomed it's, in it's, on that. It's crap. You all can right. hear Ronda calling the spots in the match. It was. It was. It was bad. Ten seconds, it was, Brian. It, it was bad. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to get in my two cents before we go to James and Kyle. You know, if we're dealing with realism, I mean, I agree with Brian. It, it, Ronda Rousey would annihilate Alexa Bliss in an actual real-life match. But this is why I believe that this match, I mean, to give Alexa Bliss any type of offense should have been no DQ, okay? Because it, you're trying to promote this match as in Ronda Rousey is entering the world of WWE, and it's different than a UFC match. This is how Alexa Bliss can get some offense. This is not the UFC. She brings out the Kendall stick. She brings out the chairs. This is the only type of offense she could possibly get. What do we get instead? We get a regular match where they're working over her arm and make it seem like it's real. Although mm. we've seen Alexa Bliss lie about how double jointed she is in the past. But, oh, we're going to ignore this? The commentator is going to plug the fact? Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, as commentators, we've never seen this before ever. It's... It's what it is. The one thing I really hated about this match was the ending, the after. Listen, Ronda Rousey wants to win the title. That's fine. Did we need Natalia in the ring? No. Did we need the Bella Twins in the ring? No. I kept thinking that either Natalia was going to turn on Ronda. Didn't happen. I'm thinking, okay, Evolution pay-per-view is coming up. Is Nikki going to be the one to turn on Ronda Rousey? No. Bree? No. What? And, and then what we got on Monday Night Raw, I am absolutely clueless. Uh, Kyle, let's go ahead and take it over to you. Ronda Rousey winning the big title against Alexa Bliss. What would you think? As much as I give Alexa Bliss crap, and she and it's true because what we give crap for is all true, uh, this was the wrong – I felt like this was such a terrible way to have Ronda win her first title in the WWE. I think if she wanted to win her first championship in the WWE, shouldn't it be something like a special moment, like a WrestleMania, where she overcomes the odds against someone like she's a new person, she's transitioned well into WWE, she goes up against a good... I thought the whole thing was to eventually do her against uh, Charlotte for her first championship, and her overcoming and beating Charlotte, who's supposed to be this quote-unquote great greatest wrestler of the division. The fact that she's Goldberg, Brock Lesnar squashed Alexa Bliss to win her first championship, to me, that doesn't feel special. That's not special. If I was Ronda Rousey, I'd, I'd be pissed if that was my first championship in WWE. That's what you're okay. going to be known for for the rest of your career is you squash someone for your first championship. Yeah, she's the baddest woman on the planet, yada, yada, yada. It's ah, – I, I didn't like it. I, I, exactly. As a I mean, Ronda uh, girl, I didn't like it. Look at her match with Nia Jax. If she had won the title then, it would have been great because she was clawing. She was like she was having trouble defeating mm-hmm. Nia Jax. If she had defeated Nia Jax for the title, it would have been fine. But the fact that this was a squash match to win her first title, totally agree with Kyle. But, uh, yeah, James, let's take it over to you. Ronda Rousey finally winning the big championship. It, ironically, in the same night that another UFC fighter will lose the title, another UFC fighter will get the title. James, what do you think about this match? Ronda I, Rousey. I, I, I agree. I mean, why why is 
why can't WWE let things build naturally? I mean, Ronda was going to come in with fanfare anyway. What is the rush to get her this title? What? Like, what has, what this title has such prestige to it? No. Here's what I would have done I would have had a match to unify this fucking title. That's what I would have fucking done. I would have had a match where you would have done something with Charlotte and somebody else. You unify the title. Around the Royal Rumble. Going into 2019, the women's titles would have been unified and the tag team titles were unified. And stop the bullshit. Th- those are the two things I would have done starting 2019. Ronda goes into the chase. She goes through Amber Moon. She goes through Asuka. She goes through person after person after person. Sasha Banks. Ba- person after... And then... She wins the Royal Rumble, and she faces Charlotte. If you want that to be the money match, I would have chosen Asuka, but fine. If you want that to be the money match because you need Charlotte, fine. I would build Charlotte like Ric Flair. I would make Charlotte a bitch. I would have her fucking have (laughs) maybe even a little bit of a – I mean, not a faction, but someone else there as a foil Mm -hmm. to watch Charlotte's back to make it that much more difficult for when Ronda comes for Charlotte, that it feels special. WrestleMania would have been a year after her debut in the company. That should have been Ronda's first title match. That should have been Ronda's first ever title title win. Right. Is WrestleMania exactly. next year? Exactly, exactly, exactly what should have been. You yeah. could you could build Charlotte up undefeated from this point forward. Charlotte doesn't lose a match, and Ronda claws and scratches and goes through the Ember Moons and Oscar and Sasha and Bailey and Becky on and on and on until she wins the Royal Rumble and she fights in claw. I would make her number five or between five and ten. Mm-hmm. And then have her claw through the Rumble. And you can even have Charlotte on commentary f- try to find a way to make Ronda not win the Rumble toward the end. And it'd be botched and screwed up and then Ronda wins. And then Ronda basically uses what Samoa Joe says, TikTok. Clock's ticking. WrestleMania's coming. That's right. you, that, hold on to that title as tight as you can as I'm taking it from you at WrestleMania. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's what you... But WWE, they have to rush every fucking thing and give her this title before Evolution. Why? Because we have to promote a pay-per-view that we're going to plunge down your throat. It's sickening. And it's against Alexa Bliss, which personally to me, uh, this match still went too James. long. Personally, to me, this match still went too long. Four minutes, three minutes too long, as far as I'm concerned. There we go. Uh, I just want to say, this is coming from a woman who said she wants to be treated like every other superstar. She wants to earn her way into WWE. Well, once again, Ronda Rousey, I treat kind of like Roman Reigns. I don't blame her. She seems like she seriously wants to be here, but the way they're booking her is terrible. She seriously wants to be like everyone and earn her shot. She was giving a title match by Nia Jax. Kurt Angle... For no damn reason, gave her a title match against Alexa Bliss. How is this earning her way for the <laughs> title? But mm-hmm. anyway, guys, I hope you're ready. We are in the main oh, event, guys. We finally made it. Seven hours, guys. We're finally yeah, here. I'll even, I'll even Luck- give you the ring bell. There you go. <laughs> Lucky number 13, guys. Here we go. Uh, I said that there was not going to be any time limit, but guys, try to keep it under freaking five or ten minutes. <sighs> We go to the main event. Four matches, three years in the making, guys. Roman Reigns finally wins the big one against Brock Lesnar, being accompanied by Paul Heyman. There is no payoff to Paul Heyman from what we saw a couple of weeks ago with Brock Lesnar. And we had a cameo appearance, and this time I'm not going to botch. We got a cameo appearance by Braun Strowman coming down to the ring. We all thought it was going to be a triple threat (laughs) match. Might as well not even been there. The fans exactly. were going crazy. It was the only way Vince says, how do I keep people from walking out on this match like they did at Backlash with Roman versus Samoa Joe? I know. How about I swerve the fans and thinking that Braun Strowman is going to cash in after this match? That's what I'm going to do. But let's go ahead. 
Brock starts with a B. We're going to take it on to Brian. Oh, no. Brian, what do you think? The, guy, the, the, the dragon is finally slain by none other than Roman Reigns. No shield required this time, baby. Roman Reigns yeah. finally wins the big one. Escapes the monster among men, Braun Strowman. Brian, take it away. The dragon might be slayed, but I wish I would have been slayed. I honestly, <laughs> I I don't need five minutes. I don't need a minute. It, it's tired. I'm tired of complaining. I'm tired of ranting. We can sit here. We can rant for the next 15 minutes. Nothing's going to change. Like Kyle said, this is going to be a long ride. I, I, I don't care. I really, I, I can 100% say I do not care. I would have walked out of that match regardless if Strowman was out there or not. It's, it's, I'm not even going to say it's getting old. It's just dead. It's, it does nothing for me. I don't want to boo. I don't want to cheer. I don't want to make any noise. I just, I, I want to go home at this point right now. I want to go to bed. I can care less about this match. I can care less about the Roman reign for lack of better words, I it's I'm not a hater. The the Roman himself, I'm sure, is a great guy. He doesn't do his own booking. You know, he's an okay guy in the ring. He needs a little bit of mic work, but they don't care. I don't care. That's all it is. I don't. I legit you said don't care. It right. We're tired of it. We're sick and tired of it. Exactly. Like, like, yeah. Except people the people, except the here. sheep out there, the blah, yeah. the sheep that are. And, and, oh, what are you complaining people. about? There's nothing wrong. Me, 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 me. <laughs> people want to complain and boo, and you're still making noise. And as long as you're making noise and you're still showing up to the arena, that's all that matters. Just like, that's so I, I'm, I'm, the such a I'm the idiot. Terrible excuse. I'm the idiot. That is a, the, the most. That was the worst excuse on the face of the planet. Yeah. I'm the idiot that bought the $300 Survivor Series ticket. And I'm like, if this guy's going to be in my main event, I, I I really don't even want to go. I have tickets to TakeOver. I have tickets to Survivor. I have the four. The, the four shows I have tickets to. Sell your to, Survivor go... Series tickets and use that <laughs> money for your beer tickets for TakeOver. <laughs> I, it, and it's sad because I used to like just enjoy going to Raw and SmackDown when they were in mm-hmm. town. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to go anymore. I, I legit... The next two days or next week. They're in Toronto. I'm not going. I said, fuck I that. To, I'm not going anymore. I used, to, I used to just go to shows because they were in town. Why not? You know, hey, it's wrestling. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to go anymore because I, I can call it from my house. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. And and it's just, why? Why? I, I The air was literally sucked out of my house as soon as I saw Roman. It was just like, all right, guys, good night. Everyone have a good night. You know? How about, how about that CGI big dog? Oh, oh Jesus Christ! I thought those God. were I thought those were Charlotte's tits popping out again. I kid you <laughs> not. Cappy Cappy was pissing himself, laughing of how corny it was. He it's, was it's, on I the mean, floor. It was so bad. It's, gotta be it's embarrassing. Me. It's literally embarrassing. Okay, what the main event? Sorry, is. no self fill. Old co-host of the show put it in perspective. He's like. He's like they keep doing these graphical work. He's like, yeah, that would have been cool in 2007, but like nowadays, it's like it's corny and it's cheap. Yeah. It's <laughs> corny. It's cheap. It's yeah. stupid, and it doesn't enhance the pay per view none whatsoever. The people there can't we, see it. It's so stupid they can't react to can, it. They can't see we, it. <laughs> we can do that, but we can't have pyro. It, it is. It is amazing how this company. It's they troll their own fans. They have the worst relationship with their fan base that they have had in decades. They could never get away with this bullshit in the 90s or in the early 2000s. Could never get away with this bullshit. But Fox, Fox for some reason gave them a billion dollars and they see no need to change. And they were hell bent. After WrestleMania, they were pissed. They were gonna get back at the fans any means necessary. They said SummerSlam is gonna be their target. Roman's walking out. How can we make it not a shit show? We're gonna put Braun Strowman out there and we're gonna say it one more time. The fact that Braun Strowman uttered out of his fucking mouth, I'm not gonna be like other money in the bank cash-ins. 
I'm going to do it face to face. And for him to not make that a triple threat, I'm going to stand outside and then someone's going to get these hands. Well, you know what, Braun? You got the hands because you didn't do shit. (laughs) That literally killed all credibility for Braun Strowman going forward. You built this guy up as his ultimate badge. You remember all the shit he was doing by throwing, like, ripping down the stage over Brock Lesnar, bursting out of ambulances. This guy who's been built up to this point as a guy who's feared by everybody on the roster Mm -hmm. and... He's couldn't, the big couldn't, dog. Couldn't you're, face, you're, couldn't face yeah. triple. Couldn't couldn't be yeah. in a triple threat. But match, couldn't so. you're telling me the guy comes down to the ring before the match started? He couldn't come into the ring and make it a triple threat match. He wanted to wait until one of them was weak enough to beat. You, you, you might as well have had Kevin Owens win the match because he could have done that. How how does that make sense? This guy understand. could this guy could lift a fucking production truck, an mm-hmm. ambulance. But he has to wait for Brock and Roman Brock. to beat the shit out of each well, other. Well, I, I thought, thought I, 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 I thought, thought better. He's scared of a fucking briefcase. He gets hit with a briefcase two times. And then down and out for the fucking count. I thought it was just as ridiculous how he was struggling with handcuffs and fucking extreme rules. They've ruined him. Don't at me. Don't come at me on Twitter. Braun Strowman is ruined. I don't care anymore. He's in the same boat as Asuka, same boat as Nakamura. He's all in the revival. Anybody that's had any credibility up to this point that is gone, he's joined the boat. He's done. They could have easily just gave us what we wanted and, and made him cash in, win the Universal title belt. The crowd would have ate that up. You know it. If he had won that Universal Championship at that point, the crowd would have loved it. He would have gotten. They would have loved it on Raw the next night. They could have had a, a Roman versus Braun the next night for the championship. Whether or not they'd have Roman beat Braun then is another story. It just or even have Braun cash in on Raw. They've ruined Braun Strowman. I'm done with him. And, I, I can't mm-hmm, get behind mm-hmm. him anymore. For the people mm-hmm. calling us marks and NXT marks and. We think we just have fun bashing Roman. Everything we've just complained about is about creative. Mm-hmm. We have not said, oh, Roman did this wrong. Lesnar no. did this wrong. Strowman did this wrong. No. It was the creative. Mm-hmm. They they literally... They, they look like idiots out there. They made these guys, all three guys, look like idiots out there. And it makes you feel bad for them. Yeah. Because at first I was like, dude, is, is Roman about to Goldberg... Lesnar when this match started. Oh, I thought the same thing. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then just the the whole, it, it was bad. It was just creatively horrible, horrible. And, and you see what they do. They are afraid of Roman getting booed. You know, this is this literally just this weekend in Monday Night Raw proved that Vince McMahon is afraid of the reaction. A that they had to add Braun Strowman in as a factor for the main event of SummerSlam. B, mm-hmm. they had to reunite the Shield for whatever fucking reason just to get Roman some cheers. They did that last year, and look what fucking happened last year. It failed. What do you think is going to happen this year? It's going to fail once again. I don't I care can. if you tell me that he has a universal title and it's different. It is nowhere close to being different. It's gonna. They literally had to pull out the Shield just to fucking put Roman over, and he wasn't even over. It's not going to work. He's still going to get booed no matter what. It, 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 and again, the people that come out, oh, stop complaining. It's a moment. Accept the moment. A moment. What moment? A moment. What moment? How many what moments moment? has he had? And, and speaking of moments, how how long was this match, Michael? Do you know how long the match was? Six minutes and ten seconds. And the, six... and the crowd still was about to turn on it. Okay, six Small minutes and ten crowd. Six minutes and ten seconds. Do not tell us the WWE doesn't know that they're messing up. How fast did this show go off the air? This whole thing, oh, how, oh, this it whole was thing reported that like, this was supposed to be twenty minutes longer. This whole thing felt like WWE was like, all right, for you know, Brock Lesnar, twenty minutes? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this whole thing felt like they were like, okay, let's get the main event out there. Let's get the, the title on Roman as quick as we can. Get mm-hmm. that shot and get out of here. That's exactly <laughs> what this look this felt well, like. Yeah, the, the ending was very rushed. <laughs> it, it was fast. As yeah. soon as Roman lifted up that belt, you saw the copyright thing. We're out of here. Oh. Out of here. <laughs> they know they know exactly what they're doing, but instead of putting the effort into making a better creative decision, they put all their effort into doing what they want to do. And you want to know fucking the sad? Happened. They do it, and they have the balls to do it because they know the fucking sheep in the herd will fucking back them up on Twitter, and mm-hmm. this, they'll gain as much social justice warriors as possible to fucking just clear out all the mark or the sorry quote unquote marks and all the people that actually have a fucking brain in this industry. Exactly. So 
I'm it, done. It, it, I'm it, done. It was, I'm the, it was the worst. It was the worst SummerSlam main event in history. I mean, I'm. Just, it, it, yeah, there's it, nothing that comes close to this. This is up there. One of the worst SummerSlam has period. Again and again, let's let's be very clear to the people that like to tweet us. This has nothing to do with Roman Reigns. This has nothing to do with Brock Lesnar. It has nothing to do with Braun Strowman. It is creatively one of the worst SummerSlam main events. One of the worst pay-per-views I've ever seen. Vince McMahon, I say it all the time, the definition of insanity is doing something over and over and over and over again, expecting a different result. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. We're getting Roman Reigns being pushed over and over and over again. We're getting the Shield reunited over and over and over again. We're recycling and redoing the same storylines over and over and over again. (laughs) Do I have to repeat myself? It's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah, for WWE, you do. So go ahead, keep <laughs> repeating yourself and rinsing. But yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to put in my final two cents. Guys, I, I didn't. I knew SummerSlam was going to be bad. I knew this ending was going to be bad. I didn't think it was going to be this bad, but it was. But I just. I don't understand. The swerve of Braun Strowman just to make sure people don't walk out on this match was absurd. It only took one spear to put down Brock Lesnar. Guys, at WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar right. kicked out of three spears. Here. One and done. He's out of here. He's got that's, UFC. That's, he that's could care less. That's believable. That's believable. I mean, I don't is understand. He, is Brock Lesnar even the beast? Like, is he even supposed <laughs> to be this believable badass anymore if he literally can't? He looked like a fucking rag doll in this entire match. Like, how many that's... suplexes did he give Roman? Two? Three? It was stupid. It was yeah. stupid. Yeah. Stupid. stupid. And it was, and the, was and, and... People expected something different going into this match. Everyone... Since what you just all you have to do is watch the other eight matches these two have had with each other, and you're going to get the same result, if not shittier. And what we got was shittier, mm-hmm. plain and simple. There was no payoff with Paul Heyman. Why did you have that stupid episode of Monday Night Raw where it looked like Paul Heyman might yeah. actually turn on Brock Lesnar? There was Lesnar. no tease. Oh, oh, Brock Lesnar's like, they, we're... they made sure to do that to troll their fans again. Oh, what, oh, you want this? Oh, you want it? You want it? You want it? Oh, well, well, well. and then we're going to make you think for an entire week. Ooh, wait a minute. Could it be? And then Paul Heyman with the pepper spray to the eyes Mr. after McMahon. talking after talking Samoan. He's got he's got all these sheep on puppet strings that want to believe this fucking crap, but we won't. We can and, see and, and, right through and the then, bullshit. And then what they did, and then what they did, what they pulled off on Raw. They, see, not only did they rob the bank at SummerSlam, then they went back to the scene of the crime, like Marv did in Home Alone, and turned the faucet on because they want to be known as the Wet Bandits. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> great movie analogy right there. Good analogies going down. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and end it with this. I talked previously with these guys saying that we could book the ending of this because it was just obviously booked horrible how we would do it. Uh, James, if you're ready, let's start with you. If you could book the ending in this match, you know, Braun Strowman does not have to be involved, but if you could book the ending in this match, do one better than Vince, how would you have booked this match? Is that just, simple just saying Roman just wins the title? Because it could just be that simple. This is what I would have done. Number one, this would have been made a no holds barred match. That's number one. Why? No pun, no pun intended. No pun, pun intended. intended. A, pun, a pun very much intended. There you go. So this would have been no holds barred match. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Roman would have been getting his ass kicked as usual, as he should have been. Brock Lesnar, I would have had him make Roman bleed again. Brock Lesnar would have given. I would have had Brock Lesnar give him three F fives and get ready, two F fives and get ready to give him give him another one. He looks lifeless, and then all of a sudden, I would have had the authors of pain come out. Mm. Authors of pain show up from either side of the arena. No music. They just show up, just like the Shield would show up. The authors of pain just come down very slowly. No music. They just show up. Paul Heyman's looking around like, what the hell is going on? They come into the ring. (laughs) They get in the ring and they triple power bomb Brock. Not once, not twice. Three times, then they come and Razor hold him up. Roman does the spear. Ball game over. 
Roman is champion, and they give a little power bomb to Paul Heyman just for good measure. Roman's a heel. Roman cuts the promo in the ring like Hulk Hogan did at Bash at the Beach and says, you know what? All you marks out there, you're going to get what you want. You want me to be the guy? You want me to be that guy? All right. Well, we're going to take away all your heroes. And Brock Lesnar is the first piece of trash. Now we're going to move on our ranks because no one's going to take this universal title from me. You people want to boo me after I bust my ass? Well, you know what? And I would have Roman say the words and don't bleep it out. Fuck you. (laughs) My goodness. You know, that actually would have worked wonderfully on Monday Night Raw. If you can imagine Roman Reigns defeating Finn Balor, Braun Strowman coming out, and then the Authors of Pain coming out again. This makes sense. It doesn't make sense what they gave us on Monday Night Raw, but very good, James. That was actually pretty damn good. Wow. All right, let's go ahead and take it over to you, Kyle. How would you have booked this match? Roman if Reigns defeating Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. Or does he defeat him? I don't know. How would you book the ending of this match? If it's an acceptable answer, I would say uh, cancel the match. And you actually put Smoa Joe oh. and AJ Styles in the main event <laughs> instead of this. Roman Reigns goes. Garbage. Roman Reigns goes down with the mumps again. Can you guys yeah. believe it? Match is canceled. Um, One of... But seriously, uh, I would have had the same ending as this one. Roman Reigns winning because eventually it needed to happen. I was just sick of them having rematch after rematch after rematch after rematch. I'm like, okay, just fucking make Roman win at this point. Move on. Never have these guys face each other again. Uh, as for what we got on Raw, again, I agree with the Authors of Pain. I think the Authors of Pain would have been a much more believable thing here than the Shield reuniting. Because really, what are the Authors of Pain doing? Seth already had his thing going. They could have had Dean turn on Seth and set up a storyline with that. They really didn't need to align themselves with Roman at this point. Um, Authors of the Pain would have made more sense. They think to basically look like Roman Reigns, but two giant bodyguards for Roman Reigns. They don't have Paul Ellering. They need somebody to get behind, right? This would have been. This is too perfect. It writes itself. It's sad that we write a better storyline than actual paid writers do for the company. It's just fucking really sad. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and, uh, I, I, I I would have had the Oscar Payne come out on Raw, Reigns retain on, or Reigns win the title at SummerSlam. Uh, Finn Balor is about to win. All of a sudden, the music hits. They come out and they. Just they lay out Finn Balor, causing a disqualification, making Reigns retain, and uh, Reigns gets up and uh, it looks like he's about to save Balor, but he starts attacking Finn Balor and they do a triple power bomb through the table and uh, you end with uh, Roman being a cocky son of a bitch going to the middle of the ring with his universal title and extending his fist out like the Shield would and then Akim and Rizar doing the Shield pose with him, uh, doing Man, uh, this... off row. Ending off rock. This book, this booking might be the booking of the night. Good, good job, James, because it, it, it just makes so much sense. I mean, on Monday Night Raw, you could have Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins going up to Roman saying, dude, what are you doing? And then you could have Authors of Pain feud with them, and you could have Roman Reigns finally putting the spear on Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, putting the final stamp on it, you know, mm-hmm. bringing up the fact that Seth Rollins turned heel on them. So, you know, what's the problem here? And, you know, also the fact that, guys, Roman Reigns has never defeated Brock Lesnar, ever. So the desperation is there, that he has to call in Authors of Pain. Exactly. So this booking by James is really good. Let's see if the main event Maharaja Brian can do any better. Brian, book this main event of SummerSlam. I agree with a group joining forces with Roman Reigns, but I'm going to go with the easier, more obvious route to other stale guys that were not on the card. The Usos. Mm. Survivor Series is coming up in a couple months. So you're going to say, hey, why are the Usos on Raw? They're a SmackDown team. Well, Roman's a heel. The Usos are a heel. They help out Roman. They come out on Raw, like uh, Jerome James said. Roman literally comes out here and says, fuck you guys. You guys wanted the bout. You got it. You guys wanted a heel Roman. You got it. But fuck you. We- I'm the champion. I'm going to do what I want. This is my blood. Just like you used to you used to boo them. They turned heel. You guys love them. I'm turning heel. Go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay? Exactly. Th- then you have 
Braun, then you hold off on the Balor rematch. So you you build you build a feud with Braun taking on Roman. The Usos are obviously gonna keep messing that up. Survivor Series comes up, then you bring up. Well, I'm gonna keep destroying all your fan favorites, the guys you guys cheer. Give me Finn Balor. Survivor Series, Usos and Reigns. It's a co-branded pay-per-view. Finn Balor and the club. Main event. Easy. Book it. Beautiful. Good stuff. All right. Book it. If not, let's just go Shayna Baszler versus Roman Reigns. For- <laughs> God damn it. Book it in, man. Yeah, All right. I was coming. <laughs> Oh, All right, and finally, the way I would have booked this, I mean, this was a great booking by James, but you know, Vince, he would never allow this. He can't. I mean, Roman, he's got to stay babyface for the rest of his life. All right, my booking, it may sound like something that Vince would want to do. It might sound cringe, guys, but remember, WWE is all about that entertainment. It's all about Brock Lesnar going to UFC. So believe it or not, how I would have booked it is get ready to cringe. Have UFC champion Daniel Cormier in the crowd, right? Oh, damn it. No, here's the thing. Okay, so no, so in the actual match, Brock Lesnar essentially lost with a distraction from Braun Strowman on the outside, right? He was too distracted, laying down Braun Strowman, tossing that briefcase. He walks into the ring, he gets that spear, and he loses. Now imagine if Daniel Cormier, and remember, Brian oh, yeah. has brought this up. Oh, Cormier, sorry. So <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Brian has brought it up several times. Uh, WWE and UFC might secretly be in cross-promotion with each other. Imagine Daniel being at SummerSlam and being the reason why Brock Lesnar loses. And then, of course, you have to sadly do what Dwayne had to do at the Royal Rumble, have Daniel, the UFC champion, in the ring, raise Roman Reigns' hands. It's going to either get booed or it gets cheered. But let's face it, the fans drank all the Kool-Aid on Monday Night Raw when the Shield came out, so perhaps they'll drink the Kool-Aid showing the UFC champion raising Roman Reigns' hands and Brock Lesnar losing. And there you go. So there's my uh, creative for that, something that Vince would like maybe, but there you go. So, guys, I will come to the end, if you guys can believe it, of SummerSlam. It didn't take us seven hours to do it, although we might be coming up on seven hours. But uh, (laughs) uh, we come to the ending, guys. It's something I used to do on my podcast. It's called Best and Worst Moments. Let's go ahead and take it to James first. James, let's go ahead and start with best, if you can think of anything. Best moment, best match. What is your best moment of SummerSlam? Best moment, Samoa Joe saying, Wendy, I'll be your daddy. <laughs> and best matches, Brian and Miz. Worst moment, we all know what that is. Reigns and right. Reigns in that fucking title, dude. It's just you disgusting. Guys, you guys going to hear that a lot. Kyle, we take it over to you. Best and worst moment of SummerSlam. Could be a match or a moment. Well, my best moment was uh, when SummerSlam ended and I stopped, had to stop <laughs> watching. And my worst moment is when I had to start watching from the beginning. So, <laughs> um, but on all honesty, best moment was probably the. Uh, I have to agree with James with the whole Samoa Joe thing. There's really nothing else that stood out to me in this entire card because it was actually god awful. And my worst moment was the rest of the. You know, my best moment was Samoa Joe promo. Worst moment was the rest of the card. I'm gonna be bluntly honest <laughs> with you. Mm. Fair enough. All right, Brian, we take it over to you. Best and worst moments of SummerSlam. All right. The obvious worst moment, Roman Reigns just sucking the life out of my (laughs) WWE childhood. (laughs) And the best moment, which I don't know how the hell you guys slept on this one, Charlotte's boobs coming out of full (laughs) CGI. Oh, my God. (laughs) Easily the best moment of the night. Um. All right, well, I don't know how I'm going to top that. Thank you, Brian. Best moment for me would probably have to be Miz versus Brian. I thought the match was good. Had a good ending. You know, we get another one of these matches. We're all hoping it's going to go down WrestleMania. It would be great. But will Vince allow the small guy, Daniel Bryan, to finally get that win at the Royal Rumble? We'll have to wait and see. I honestly believe Vince would allow Miz to win the Royal Rumble before he allowed Daniel Bryan. But, uh, yeah. And uh, we are in a general consensus. Guy, worst moment of SummerSlam for me, Roman versus Brock. I mean, I don't know what it's to say. The worst of seven series, the worst of four series, three years in the making, horrible ending, worst rivalry perhaps in the history of the WWE. Guys, we get into the last category of SummerSlam. It is your rating system. We're going to give it the old Peyton Royce, five out of five. Take it over, James, out of five. 
You have the optional Michael Chow, zero if you want. SummerSlam 2018, what'd you think out of five? Optional it's, zero if you want to. It's going to get two and a half. And the only reason it's getting that is because of AJ and Joe and The Miz and Daniel Bryan. If those matches were not on this card, oh my God. I mean, we actually may be treading in negative territory. Yeah, I mean, that's how bad. But because those matches were there, they're not getting the three. They're getting a 2.5 right down the middle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. We take it over to Kyle. Forget Dave Meltzer. The Peyton Royce 5 out of 5 or optional zero. Kyle. Well, I will give credit to those two things that James just said. I will give it the Michael Chow zero here. Mm-hmm. I really round, was round. Uh, very unimpressed with SummerSlam. It was too long. It had me asleep before the show even started. Nothing about the pre-show was exciting. Nothing about the card stood out to me except for those two things, which were... It was great, but, I mean, Star Slam just didn't feel like a big four pay-per-view, so I'm going to give it a big fat zero. Mm-hmm. Take it over to Brian. Five out of five or the Michael Chow optional zero. What do you give it, Brian? SummerSlam 2018. All right, I'm going to switch it up a little bit here. I'm going to give it uh, two Charlotte boobs <laughs> for the whole pay-per-view. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, thank you, Brian. I All right, that. and for me... <laughs> Oh, man. James, once again, refresh my memory. What did you give SummerSlam? 2.5. 2.5. I'm going to have to give SummerSlam out of 5. I'm going to have to give it a 1 out of 5 because 2 out of 5 is good. But the, here's the thing. I go on that every single pay-per-view is did the ending – I want to leave this pay-per-view at the end of this match going, that was a good ending. I'm glad I watched it. I don't want to watch a WWE pay-per-view where the ending was just so bad it overshadows the rest of the pay-per-view. I was like, this was a bad ending. It left me sick to my stomach. It was one of the worst summer slams that WWE has produced, one of the worst main events. So just kind of like what James said, if it wasn't for AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe and the Miz versus Daniel Bryan, this would have gotten the Michael Chow zero. But because of those two great matches, I'm getting a one out of five. So there we go. A general consensus, including including Bryan Charlotte's <laughs> Two boobs. Uh, this is this is a below average pay per view from all of us. So mm-hmm. there you go, guys. That was SummerSlam. Uh, Kyle, was there any fan tweets for this pay per view? There is a lot of fan tweets, Yikes. and I want to apologize to everybody, but I am going to have to move the fan tweets to next week. I'll read all. So I'll take all your fan tweets and I will read them next week because a lot of them will kind of have to do like it still ties into next week. Some of them does have to do with SummerSlam, but. We're going to do it right at the beginning of the show next week, I promise. That'll be the first thing we do on the Lowdown show next week. But I, we have so many fan tweets that I, this show is going to go on for way too long. It'll be longer than SummerSlam at this point if we continue with these fan tweets and us discussing about them. So I will uh, save them for next week, um, for next week's Lowdown show. I do apologize, guys. But uh, <laughs> at this point, where I live and where James lives, we're literally sitting at 2 in the morning right now. So we are going to... Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Wrap it up. So, yes, that was our SummerSlam review. Uh, thank you, Michael Chow, for taking the reins for that, uh, pun intended, uh, for it w- SummerSlam. This, was, <laughs> Summer this was absolutely exhausting. Brian, how'd you mm. used to do this? Gosh, damn. <laughs> That's why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> but as as for next week's Lone Show, we are back to square one in our case, as we are going to be uh, reviewing mostly NXT, guys. We are literally going to be spend maybe I'm at this point I only want to spend five to ten minutes on a main roster recap for the show. But our main focus for the show going forward is going to be NXT. We're going to be featuring some more stuff, especially when the NXT UK tapings start coming out. We're also going to be featuring more news on NXT. What or other has to do with NXT call ups, people at the performance center, or anything uh, has to do with uh, some NXT time. Everything's going to center around NXT basically. So um, going forward, it's going to be more NXT based because it is in our minds, and a lot of people have to start turning their heads towards it. It is the A show. 
It, it, it literally is not considered, I, in our eyes, is not a minor league brand. It surpasses anything the main roster does in terms of character, storyline, and booking of pay-per-views. It's, in, it's incredible. So for going forward now, main focus on, on, on this podcast is NXT. But we want to thank you for tuning in to this, NXT, or this SummerSlam review and NXT TakeOver. Again, TakeOver is on part one of uh, the Lowdown Show this week. And this is part two reviewing all of SummerSlam. I want to thank our wonderful special co-host for this evening. And that is James from That Ass Podcast. Really do appreciate you coming on to the show and uh, taking time away from your busy schedule to come on our show and uh, co-host with us uh, for this episode. So Thank, thank you so you. much. I uh, appreciate it, guys. I'll be uh, back with Tiffany co-hosting on Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to do basically free-for-all relationships. You can call in and talk about anything, movies, uh, retro stuff, nostalgia stuff. It's going to be talked about. Um, so we'll have a lot of fun on there on, on Friday night. And thank you guys for having me. This is fun, as always, uh, doing these shows with you. Um, getting all the stuff out, ranting, raving, and telling WWE what they should be doing. Um, had a lot of fun. I really appreciate you. And Brian, you're a good guy. You're a good guy. <laughs> James, you're, you're a jabrone. You're a little green, but I like you, buddy. Yeah. I like hey, you. Brian's a hard bro. pill to swallow. Don't worry. We had, we had, we had, a, good, we had a good fight. So it's all right. We worked it out. Lies, lies, <laughs> lies. I'm just here to break your balls, James. You're all, you're, you're all right with my book. Thank ask, you, bro. Ask, I ask these guys. If I'm not breaking your balls, then then we have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you're bringing excitement to the podcast. That's what it is. Yeah. Anyways, um, I will leave all the links down in the description below, guys, for Dadass Podcast, their Twitter account, their YouTube page, and James and Tiffany's uh, Twitter page. Just go give them a follow and go give them a subscribe on YouTube. If you have a YouTube account and you need to subscribe to them, please go and do. But other than that, uh, guys, that is going to wrap it up for episode 111 right here on Lowdown Show, the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 and SummerSlam Review Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and no holds barred on anything we say, pun intended. I am your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'm always joined by my co-host. He is the host that runs the West Coast, Hollywood Michael Chow, and NXB Brian at HeelTurn21 on Twitter. And also for this episode, our special guest co-host from That Ass Podcast, James, guys, again, go follow them on Twitter. Go follow them on YouTube. All links will be down in the description below on the YouTube page. And we're always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Hello, friends. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>